Well, hello and welcome to the NECC here for some Rocket League in week number two. I am your host today, Captain Atsoka, joined in the booth by the astronomically gifted caster, Orbital. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. I've covered uh, two different games already, so why not a third? We got Rocket League here tonight, and I'm very excited to see, what, uh, see the week number two action. Well, good, because we're going to have a stellar lineup, you know, for today. We're going to have some pretty tasty events, to say the least. For our first game here today, we're going to be seeing the Ottawa Braves Black take on Colorado College Gold. 
Yeah, this is going to be a good time. Of course, Christopher, Mate, and Kami are all going to be coming out here and cruising, hopefully, to a victory. They already started off things 1-0, and it was a 3-2. It was quite close against RSU Red, but there is a high chance here in the Challengers division to go ahead and keep cruising along. I mean, it's a very strong set of players. Not only that, I mean, they're from Kansas. I'm in Kansas. Please, come on, a little bit of camaraderie there. Well, let's go take a look at how are our players doing on Colorado College Gold. And you can see right here, we're going to be going with Ya, yeah, Slime, Delime, and Moses. Now, you're looking at this lineup, and you got to you gotta kind of pay attention here that these are mostly, you know, upperclassmen. You got the senior, you got the junior, and the one sophomore. So, there's going to be a little bit of an experience gap here, I, to say the least. But, you know, with that being said, you know, uh, all things considered, but Colorado College Gold, they did lose their first game in week number. Number one, they fell to Wayne State College at a one to three split. So they're going to be looking to rectify themselves as we get ready to head into uh, week number two. Yeah, and that's really interesting, right? You're talking about experience. The youngest player for this side, at least from the starting roster here for Colorado College Gold, is going to be uh, is going to be slimed the line, right? As as a sophomore, on the other side, Christopher, May, and Kami are all sitting at freshman and sophomore levels. So this is going to be quite interesting to watch of course this is again just week number two teams are still experimenting still learning about what exactly they want to do and we have kickoff already for game number one absolutely and starting off wasting no time at all y'all already back on the sidewall looking to get a rebuttal but on the side of ottawa black they were not able to get control of the balls once again it looks as though colorado gold already starting off a line on the uh on the midfield early but that clear is gonna put Colorado Gold. Yep, this uh, is uh is this is an finally. absolutely quick cast right now, and they are cruising forward as we do see Ottawa Black just trying their best to uh, gather up a little bit of information. And again, both teams are stalling out right now on the pitch. They are just jockeying for position as well as possible, right? This is this is them just hanging on as much as possible, but of course, when jockeying for position, you are kind of questioning what's going to happen here. But Christopher goes ahead and scores the first goal for Ottawa Braves Black. Very nice to kick things off. And that was off of a that was off of a cheeky one here. You can see a little bit of a roll in. The demo in the back just to try and open these up. But couldn't make it happen. So a little bit of a chase from Colorado as they are now chasing the 1-0. Yeah, that they are. And honestly, that was just a flips bad coming from Ya. Unfortunate feels flips bad. All of that is sad, but that is going to be a one goal early lead in the favor of Ottawa Black being able to take advantage of Colorado Gold kind of pushing the envelope a little bit too much at the midfield. We already saw one time before where Ottawa Black were really able to once again get a long clear and turn it into a goal as they look to do just that here again. Yep, they're gonna they're gonna try to aim for it. And the last time, remember the last goal that they had was a little bit of a give, right? And for Colorado Gold now, they're gonna hope to try and match pace as uh, as they are just trying to chase around. Kami, though, Kami's just having a blast on the sidelines here, just rolling along the edges here. And again, setting up perfectly in front of the net. No one really there to capitalize on it. So Ottawa Black, we can see they are being aggressive to kick things off here. And it's Colorado Gold that are just trying to create space, create their own opportunities that are constantly being rejected by Ottawa Black. Yeah, and now we're almost two minutes gone here in game number one, and still Ottawa Black will be riding this one to nil lead, but hold the phone. An opportunity now for Colorado Gold. Off oh. of this pitch, yeah, using the power of the dummy to put this one on and in. Look at this shot, absolutely insane. The pinch into the uh, back hit as well. It was a simple tap to get over. I believe that was Christopher there. So a huge hold onto that, uh, onto this game one. Saying, hey, we want the opportunity. Shot just goes a little bit off the rim. But you know what? Off the pole is now going to go in as Colorado Gold go ahead and take advantage of a little bit of a weak side kick and easily pop it in. Beautiful job. Yeah, and you know, we always talk about the cheat up on kickoffs. You know, some people say you got to watch out how you do it, you know, because again, we saw Ottawa Black. They got called off on the kickoff. They got beat, plain and simple. And unfortunately, the cheat up went to the favor of Colorado Gold. But now it goes right back to Ottawa Black. You've got to watch the way these cheats go on the kickoff. It can bless you in the morning and curse you in the afternoon. And this was a single player play as well, right? That was all Kami, I believe. All Kami there. Uh, after that kickoff, after you were uh, rightly talking about that cheat, and, and then being able to score, that gives Ottawa Black a little bit of time to finally get an even challenge, but it still goes up in the air, and that's a miss by uh, Christopher went up as well, but missed, and, and then Kami.
just says, hey, it's a dead ball. I got it. Don't worry. Two miss. I got the third hit. Yeah, and it was unfortunate again because Yo, you know, again, trying to get up there to get a touch on the ball. But as we all know, you're only going to start off with a finite amount of boost. So again, just being able to try and get up there in time, really difficult to do, especially with such a short amount of space to work with and a short amount of boost. But now, Ottawa Black able to get two back-to-back -back goals, once again solidifying a one-goal lead over Colorado Gold. And now, once again, the aggression coming from Colorado. And... For the squad, uh, for Colorado, they need to not get sucked into this crazy pacing, right? The pacing right now is getting a little bit out of control with it back and forth, and I do fear that if they do continue to have this kind of pacing, it is going to lead to Ottawa Black continuing the charge, right? Because as soon as Colorado were able to score multiples, it ended up Ottawa just streaming right back with some of those, uh, some of those goals on their own. So slowing things down, getting back in your own rhythm and your own momentum uh, might be in the cards here. So right now, Sai coming in here and saying, hey, this is this is what we're going to do. And how we're going to play it, a little bit off the ledge, though, getting contested by two other players. That they are. And now already we're getting some demolitions on the board now. This is what I like to see. You know me. I love the physical play. I like to see a little bit of that demolition derby. And now we are able to see at least one demo on the board, but not much coming of it. So you can see it was going towards the side of Ottawa Black, who are able to recover nicely on defense. And now they're going to transition their defense into some offense. Yep, transfer as quick as possible. And that's all Rocket League really is, is the push and pull the back and forth on the defense and offense. And how quickly can you change up your tactics? Can you cover for each other as well? And that's what we're hoping to see right now. Christopher is trying their best. Ottawa Braves Black, yes, you enjoy this 3-2 for quite some time. But for a while, there hasn't been anything. And that demo might be the opening. Yes, it is. That is Colorado College watching as that ball just goes in perfectly in the net. And now finally, we see we have a demo play that did result in a goal. That was some good physicality. Again, not only being able to clear the ball out for Sison to come through with that shot, but also providing a smoke screen for the defense who were trying to protect their net. Again, that is how you execute a perfect demolition play. And now Ottawa Black will be sitting with a little bit of insurance as they have a two-goal lead, but not for long. Yeah, now cuts that deficit down to one. Alrighty then, this is going to get a little bit interesting because again, these teams have now uh, more or less made the statements that, alright, if you want to play fast, we'll answer right back, right? This pacing of this game will not stop. And I mean, listen, if they want to play fast, that's all on them, right? It is going to get volatile. It's going to get crazy. It's going to get dangerous for either side because when you get into this pacing of we're going to constantly aggress, you tend to leave yourself wide open. It's a scary thought to have. Auto Black down to the last minute are hoping for one more goal. You want to have a two goal lead moving into those final few seconds Only to really feel safe. Currently missing, I don't know if this is simple. Yeah, they're going to give it their best shot, but rolling through. Moses going to go ahead and try and chase after that ball a little bit. They've still been. This is just uh, continuing get on their on their uh, on their own side but of course slime is gonna try and roll it up and Colorado gold and try and prep for a goal again 20 seconds left but it's a nice catch off Kami able to break up that attack and now it's mate going up side trying to roll it in gets over one defender and makes it what a beautiful goal to be made just from midfield touches all the way the aerial game out of mate is ridiculous over Moses over yeah and it is a goal Five to three is the score. Colorado Gold got to pull off some magic if they want to bring it right back in. Let's move. Oh, well, this is again down to the last couple seconds. Ottawa Black will be looking to take game number one as soon as that ball touches. It is Ottawa Black to go ahead and take game number one here in this best of five. Phenomenal job being done here, and again, it was fast-paced. We were talking about it. Two goals in the first two minutes, and then in that th in the third minute to about four and a half minute mark, it was it was gone. It was anyone's game at that point. 
Absolutely. But I also got to give a little bit of credit to um, to Colorado College Gold because, once again, you know, they were giving the good back and forth. You know, they were able to get some cheeky kickoff goals. They were able to come through and really, you know, once again, bring that deficit oh so closer and oh so close to equalizing at one point. But again, once you have that two goal cushion, that insurance, you start to play with a lot more confidence and then you start to keep the other team confined within their own half, which is just going to make it harder for them to score goals. So once you find yourselves at that deficit with that much time remaining it's it's going to be really hard to make the comeback but good thing is is that now colorado college gold is warmed up they know what to expect this is a best of five series so now they can head into game number two with a little bit more of a game plan i mean the game plan is good but we saw ottawa black they know how to play against that green right they know how to play without a plan or how to break up the plan right there's always the planners there's the opportunistic players and then there are those that just kind of play whatever, right? And it, and it feels like if Colorado Gold want to have a plan, that's great. However, Ottawa Black are reading it. And I want to say reading it well, as we have another goal off the first 15 seconds. Christopher giving us 101 kilometers per hour goal. And again, this was absolutely huge coming from Sias. And not only to get the read on the ball, I mean, it was a pretty easy read. It was right there in front of the goal. But the recovery coming out of the corner, they had just landed and were able to get to the ball ASAP before a defender could reach it. Honestly, I thought the defender might have been able to get there in time. But no, Siasen was there immediately. And now, once again, Ottawa Black at the lead. Yep. And this is going to be a roll in Christopher aiming for a second. In, and that worries me, right? The, the plan from Colorado Gold seems solid, right? Be on the grass and be always on the attack. The problem is, is it tends to leave your goal a little bit unattended. And with that in mind, you do have to be worried. So now a little bit of a shot. Moses tried to take a little pin to the goal, but couldn't really find it. And now a demo opens up a little bit of space and ball rolling back to midfield. That's going to be picked up by Sai, who, of course, is a mate. And a little bit of name change there. Kami coming in, getting rolled out by Yun. Might make a little bit of space, trying to bounce around. But again, Sai being able to break it out and keep things at a breakneck pace. Orbital, you know what's hard to believe is that it's only been a minute. I feel like we've already been in game number two for a while now, but only a minute of Rocket League time has gone by. And you know why? I call it Rocket League time theory. For every 10 seconds in real time, it's only a Rocket League minute. That's how time <laughs> tends to go in Rocket League. A lot can happen in such a short amount of time. And Ottawa Black still with that 1-0 to nil lead over Colorado Gold. Yeah, and, and you're feeling right now, and there it is, the challenge in the air, but now it's a perfect shot for Moses. Man, I was talking about the challenge from Ottawa Black, but that was a ridiculous goal for Moses. Picking it up off this awkward kind of pinch. Yes, it looked like a pass, and I mean, if that was a pass, that was a glorious one at that. Beautiful, beautiful play coming out of Colorado Gold, as that is a snappy, snappy kill. Oh, absolutely. And again, not only that, but that was just a great heads up play there in the midfield to be able to really turn that one around and get a cheeky goal. I say it's cheeky because they were able to find the defense napping. Again, nobody really back into the defensive side being able to recover that save. So again, a great heads up play coming from Colorado as they look to get another. And they're hoping to, and they're hoping to keep doing this. So right now, as you said, Colorado Gold, they're a team that likes to make a play and they like to kind of work together to try and get these goals. Ottawa Black, I feel a bit more opportunistic, a, uh, a lot more individualistic, right? They like to get goals on their own, but sometimes if the opportunity arises, they will take it. Christopher getting their second here in game and number two. So far, two goals to Christopher and hoping for a third to get the hat trick. I mean, all eyes are open. This has been a rebuttal for a rebuttal. Ottawa Black real happy about how the current standings are going that they are now that they have the one goal lead with just less than three minutes to go Colorado gold is going to look to equalize as they face the, as they face yet another deficit here in game number two but this pass over to slime to lime had the makings of a goal but unfortunately they could not find the back of the net is now Christopher is going to take a turn trying to find a little fin finesse but unfortunately finds nothing but air Air is there, but the dangerous thing is not your air. Well, it is on your side. The problem is, is right now Ottawa Black are on the challenge, right? You can see him jockeying for position, looking for the angle, and Sizen gets bumped out of position. That could have been a great read. A little bit of pinch. Can you roll forward? No, out of boost. So it's not going to work there. So the ball rolls all the way across the field, and we're going to be looking for a bit more. Christopher goes up, blocks it out, and the rest of the team are ready to go for a third round of attacks. A little bit of chance. side. are you going to roll it in? You almost get it, but Yami with a great, great block. Oh, absolutely. And now you can see Christopher trying to pinch this one out. But yet again, this could be a fast break Ooh. play as Slime to Lime will put this one on and in to equalize the game at two goals apiece. Yeah. 
this was this was gorgeous, right? Just a simple, simple goal right there. Bumping it from midfield and knocks it right in. So really well done by Colorado Gold to even things up. Now what are they going to do? Now the question, of course, is going to be can Ottawa Black actually respond? This is going to be a chance for them to go 2-0 in this group. But with the high knock, Christopher is going to have to bounce it back and get things under control. That's a big question mark. But Colorado Gold, they're feeling the rhythm, feeling the rhyme. And it's not exactly bobsled time, but it might be close enough. Mm, ooh, I could go for a good bit of bobsled time. You know, we're in the fall season. We're going to have to save that for the winter season. But best believe, it's going to be a banger regardless. But until then, Siasen will uh -oh. be taking a huge shot here, nearly going on and going in. But the rebuttal and the recovery oh, from so Colorado... Cool was not enough to hold off the offense from Ottawa Black. They will once again go up one goal against Colorado Gold. Man, you see Kami come out of the left side of your screen right there, and you just had a feeling, right? You just had a feeling that Kami was going to score there and that it was going to be perfect. So we are getting a, a little bit further as we do see an unfortunate, um, an unfortunate DC this feels a little bit bad. I believe the game will continue being played out here. It's one of the unfortunate things of Rocket League. And I mean, they got to play out this last minute or so. You know, I'm receiving word. I'm not sure how this is going to go down until it actually does. But we may just bring Slime the Lime back and, you know, try and run the match back at, you know, where we left off at a minute and 20, you know, 3-2 scoreline. But for the time being, you know, we can still have fun with the ball. You know, we can still oh, play yeah. around with a 3-D-2. Um, if they do decide to play it out, it's going to be very unfortunate for Colorado Gold simply because, you know, unfortunately, you know, they lost connection. And if there's anything that we know about uh, Psionics, it's that it do, in fact, be like that sometimes. <laughs> it, it do, in fact. It do, in fact. Taking a look here, uh, as you said, Captain Natsoka, it, it is true. We will be going in there, but we can glean a lot of information, right? Number one is Colorado Gold feel good on setups, right? Their setups are actually solid right whenever they want to prep for a play they can make it happen they can even things up and you know as long as they get the ball rolling from their side of the field and make their way forward at their own pace they're good when they pass when they're able to roll off the edges they're doing okay the problem of course is that when a little bit of a wrench is thrown in their plans they can't recover as much and the opportunities afforded to them from the side of ottawa black may not be as good either right yes the opportunities arise sometimes but for them to take it and roll it into their style, you can see them, right? Sometimes it's like, hey, they have a fast break, but they can't build it up. So Colorado Gold, it's a lot more about prep. It's a lot more about can we make things work for us. On the side of Ottawa Black, though, the opportunities that they're affording themselves are huge, right? If they see an opening, someone's always there to back each other up, right? Christopher, Kami, as well as Sai. Every single time they go for a challenge, after that initial goal back in, I think, uh the earlier stages here in game two, they have been phenomenal in following up on each other and having that sort of information uh, given to each other. So very, very impressive. Absolutely. And then not only that, but, you know, just being able to go toe to toe with Ottawa Black every single time, even in their first game. It's not like Colorado Gold made it easy. They definitely made it difficult time and time again. They were always within one of equalizing. But every single time, Ottawa's aggression on the offense just constantly, you know, raising the bar, being able to score goal after goal. Sometimes they use the team play. Sometimes they opt out for the solo mechanics, but they are always playing aggressive. And it's a double edged sword because twice I remember so far. At the bare minimum, two times, Colorado Gold was able to punish Ottawa Black for creeping too much past that midfield line, and they got beat out by a long clear, and they were scored on because of it. Yeah, it's, a, it's a dicey scenario to always pick up on. And, and I mean, I'm curious. I, I want to know what their game plan is. Colorado Gold, there is a chance that they fall down into O2, into that kind of complicated area where it's it's limbo, right? Do you change up your style or do you kind of try and stick with it? Because if you go O2, you understand that your style is not working, right? On the side of Ottawa Black, you're like, hey, I'm, I'm cool. I mean, we're chilling. We're having a great time and we're not having any problems here. So, I mean, there, there's so much to think about. And I, I'm wanting to know if Slime is going to have a big change up here. Because again, with this kind of intermediary, as again, uh, the understanding is we are in OT. They're just playing around. They're having a little bit of a blast, waiting for Slime to be reconnected. And then we'll get back to, uh, I believe it was 3-2 in the goal scoring range with a minute 20 left on the clock it's i mean it's oh it's continuing i'm so sorry so no we're just we're just continuing we're just gonna keep going 
Well, now oh. we are no longer. It's, <laughs> that's that's going to about do it. You know, we were able to end this one in OT. It's a feels bad. It happens. Like we talked about in the Psionics Proverbs, Article 3, verse 22. It do, in fact, be like that sometimes. So, <laughs> we're just going to have to take that one on the chin. Or rather... College, I'm sorry, Colorado College Gold, they're going to have to take that one on the chin because, once again, you know, unfortunately, they fell in overtime. So it's it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's, it's tricky, to say the least. Yeah, it's extremely tricky. And I do apologize because we were wondering what was happening with Slime then. At least Slime may have reconnected a little bit in there, too. So just kind of the thought process there is it is a little knock on the chin, right? Man, we had to disconnect, and unfortunately, there is no pausing, right? It, it breaks the momentum of the game, so... You gotta just kind of play it out, but there is a chance, right? Colorado, uh, Colorado can take this and try and work with it one of two ways, right? Let it overcome and be like, hey, we should have won this series, and they let it break their mental. The other, just come back in, play your game, keep rolling through, and just try your best here. Because, again, we are seeing glimmers. If they are allowed to kind of step their own game up, it works very, very well. We see them set up the passes and then maybe a little bit of the aerial dribbles. It does work. However, they gotta find an answer, and as you said, maybe a bit more physicality, right? Bring Ottawa Blacks to their level as well get physical get those demos in break open space forcefully if you have to oh absolutely and you know me i'm a fan of the demo plays i love the physical aspect of the game you know and again you know you can you could bring that in but at the same time you don't want to over rely on it and i gotta tell you so far i feel like ottawa black has found a good balance you know they're not over utilizing the demo plays you know they're using them in the appropriate times and they're not, they're not putting themselves out of position or rotation going for demos but in the meantime we're gonna put the stream out of position and out of rotation just for a moment because we're gonna be taking a short break but when we come back we will continue this game between colorado college gold and ottawa Brave black you are not going to want to miss it do not go anywhere
Well, hello and welcome back once again to the NECC Rocket League week number two. Once again, I am your host, Captain Atsoka, joined by Orbital Cast to bring you once again this matchup between Ottawa Braves Black and Colorado College Gold. Orbital, bring us back in. Where have we left off? What is this looking to shape up as we head into game number three? We have been left off with a 2-0 scenario. Ottawa Braves Black are one game away from moving to a 2-0 record after week number two here. And that is one that they'll really, really like. Again, a 3-0 on your record would feel great, right? Colorado College Gold, of course, chasing after them, hoping to at least get one game on their side. And it's an uphill battle, right? Very uphill battle right now. Ottawa Black have been shown to be quite strong. But let's see if Colorado Gold, in that time that we are on a break, have anything to say about it. And already we get a demo off the, off the board. Oh yeah, we're getting the demo right there and off the rip. And I have said it before and I will stand by it. We need an active stat tracker for the demos because I think the demo plays is uh, going to be a big stat. Speaking of, how about a good old fashioned bump play? Christopher going with the Fennec Finesse decides to take the self air dribble. And here comes Siason just bumping the goalkeeper out of the way, leaving a wide open net for Christopher. That is how you get the bump plays done. One to nil now for Ottawa black i mean you said you wanted physical it may not be demo physical but it's physical enough right that is another way to kind of create an opportunity and this time it's gonna be a great goal by moses turning things around saying hey give us an opportunity and we will absolutely take it was placed christopher trying to roll it around to uh, the other side of the field but just set it up so perfectly for colorado Absolutely. If you're going to be going across your own net, you're going to just going to have to eat that thing. You're going to look for a pinch. You're going to try and smack it into the ground. Anything you can to avoid having a setup like that. It feels bad, you know, but it happens to the best of us. Now, once again, we are tied at one apiece. Colorado Gold looking to take a win here to avoid the 3-0 sweep. You can see here, they are playing with a bit more tempo in their back pocket, right? They are a little bit more fast-paced, a little bit more aggressive on their own. And they aren't losing the ball as much, right? Yes, there have been some challenges by Ottawa uh, Ottawa Black, but for the most part, Colorado Gold do have a handle on it. They're passing a little bit safer, and because of that, it's forcing Ottawa Black to be a bit more aggressive, right? Feeling on their end that, hey, we have to fight. We have to go for those demos instead of chasing around, trying to run the Colorado Gold Racket. Well, let's see if Colorado Gold can now do the same as they look to try and get some offense going. As you can see, it will be Yaw there patrolling the midfield, and now a huge touch coming from Siason over to the side, but it is met by Slime the Lime. And now the follow-up coming from Moses. They're going to back off, but they get 100 boosts on the way, and once again, Colorado Gold trying their best to patrol the midfield, but now Christopher is on the attack, and Slime the Lime once again with the recovery. And that was, uh, that was Christopher going for that attack, and... I think ran out of boost midway through as well. Now a double challenge going up in the air, leaves it open for Kami. Try and block it in, but this is going to come from the side, and it was a little bit of a touch. Christopher almost able to bank it into the goal, but not going to happen. The goal post caused too much of a distraction. Now for the second attack, Christopher can't get it over the defender. So that's two shots very narrowly back to back and almost making it in. That could have been Ottawa Black moving up to 2-1, but instead Colorado Gold take advantage. Absolutely, and we just witnessed the best goalkeeper in Rocket League, and it was the crossbar, without a doubt. Has denied so many goals time and time again as Colorado Gold looks to avoid it, but now a long clear will send this one back to the midfield. As you will see, Slime to Lime looking for y'all there, but it is met by Kami, who's going to put this one back into the corner. And now Moses not being able to connect as Slime to Lime does find their way back. And now the pass and Ooh. redirect will go on and will go in. And right at the two-minute mark, we have ourselves a tie ball game. Look how far that pass went to. That was a ridiculously open net. And you could you could see, right? You can see Ottawa Black going, we messed up. We absolutely messed up right there. Now in a 2-1, Colorado Gold feeling great about this game and a little bit more on brand from themselves. But Christopher, ready to go. And a chance, yeah, might get body blocked out, but a great block by yeah. Oh, yeah, and I thought Ottawa Black had two goals on the board. No, they only have one. So now, for the first time, what feels like in a long time, Colorado Gold has a lead over Ottawa Black. This is huge. They're going to get a huge boost of momentum now, and all they really have to do is just hold on to this one goal lead for another, another minute and 35, and they're going to have a win on their hands. Yeah, this is going to be great, right? That is what they're hoping for. One step at a time. 
Christopher is saying, I, I don't care. I want to break open an opportunity for our team as well. We want to finish this off right now. No chance at a reverse sweep. Hopefully not going to happen in Colorado Gold. Fighting right back for it right now. Trying to take challenges off on the side. And, and and again, they're trying to set up for their own play, but trying to get the ball under control is a little bit difficult right now. So instead, popping it up to the right side of the field, setting it up in the middle. Who's going to grab it? It's going to roll out. Christopher says, okay. Got a little bit of time to work with. The touch doesn't land, so Sison hands it over to Kami, who is going to prep it off on the edge. Right now, Colorado Gold still jockeying for it. Up and over as Slime picks it up in front of the goal. Yeah, you really got to be careful because not all whiffs are bad. Some are what we like to call tactical whiffs. So even if you see a whiff go down on the field, it could just be the good old-fashioned bait and switch. So you really got to be careful on which whiff you decide to try and commit on because for all you know, it could be tactical. So now, once again, we <laughs> see Ottawa Black trying to get the ball cleared out. They only have 30 seconds left to try and equalize it. Now Colorado Gold is turning up the heat with all this aggression, Ooh. and it will be ya to see say yes to that pass and put the ball into the back of the net and with that that pretty much secures the end of this game Colorado Gold coming alive here in the third game 23 seconds left on the clock yes we've seen some rapid fire goals so Ottawa Black they're looking to streak for that but Colorado Gold uh, saying hey look we don't have to all we have to do is get a neutral kick and we're fine right again for them all they have to do is run down the clock and they are going to be happy. Colorado Gold not getting shut out here even after losing game number two. They're happy. They are right back in the driver's seat, and I said it, right? After that kind of issue with game number two, you're okay. Two seconds left, Ottawa Black. I mean, you get, you get a really good kickoff here, and there's a chance you tie things up. Oh, absolutely. This game, this series, far from over. We still have more Rocket League to go. I mean, in this match, here in game number three, you know, it's it's nearly over as once again you see Colorado with the lead here as the final second does tick down and finally the ball will hit the dirt to make it hurt for Ottawa as they will receive their first loss of the series and Colorado College Gold will get their first win. Yeah, took a little bit of effort there and honestly game three went a little bit slower than we were expecting right the last two goals came out fairly quickly but it, it was slow paced right they both came out within the last minute and a half and it was dangerous right all the way through we saw how many goals ottawa black were aiming for we saw two or three shots that were just a little bit misplaced and you got to kind of chalk it up to ottawa black going a bit aggressive maybe getting a bit fancy with it and i mean that first goal by colorado gold also felt uh, like a kind of given right if you're going to send the ball as we said in front of your goal either play it high or play it fast send it you got to move quickly you can't let that happen ottawa black though i think will have learned their lesson and should bounce back again they were 2-0 up they're not too worried about one game right they're okay they realize they have plenty more rocket league to play and plenty more opportunities to continue to fight back against colorado yeah, and right now it's Ottawa Black putting away the broomstick, but it's Colorado College Gold that's going to be taking it out as they are going to be looking to get that reverse sweep. This is going to be huge. Again, they still have a long way to go. They're going to have to win two back-to-back -back games in order to pull it off. But with that being said, I do agree with you, Orbital. I do think going into the next match that um, Ottawa Black is going to be bringing some more of that no holds ball aggression that we saw in games number one and two, where they were able to get their two back-to-back -back wins. You know, they were playing a little high risk, high reward, but it paid off it worked for them in game number three they slowed things down and colorado gold were really able to do a lot of damage so let's see how both of these teams will adapt and react as we head into game number three game number three starting off a little bit slower than maybe some people were expecting but again the ball on the side of ottawa black and I mean, that's going to continue right this is now colorado gold saying hey maybe we have ottawa black on the ropes here yeah, another couple of attacks and yeah trying to aim for that goal a little bit of a fight right outside there but it's still the touches ottawa black not able to try and draw this ball away onto the other side of the field just yet no not just yet but once again moses having to get back in a hurry to try and play defense here as siason does go up high goes off the backboard but moses gets in the way and avoids the double touch there for Ottawa Black is once again we're seeing Ottawa really starting to step up their aggression they're trying to keep Colorado Gold confined into their own half but right now the reads from Colorado are just going absolutely bonkers and now a, and even an attempt at some demo plays going awry in the net of Ottawa Black and they and they're very very worried the longer the game goes on an easy pace the worse it gets but that's gonna be one that you like again the opportunistic Christopher from end to end here, Kami flicks it up midfield. A little bit of ricochet off the back. 
beautiful placement, simple and clean. I was just about to mention Christopher and the rest of Ottawa Black getting a little bit worried. Colorado Gold, as long as they go without a goal for the time being, it pulls more and more in favor of Colorado Gold being able to prep, be able to set up their plays. Ottawa Black took advantage and now 1-0 here in this game number four. Trying to play keep away from Colorado Gold as they go on the offensive. Honestly, I cannot wait to see the stat sheet because so far for Ottawa Black, time and time again, I'm seeing Cami come up with the pass plays, being able to get these insane flicks to get the passes off the backboard to find their teammates. So, you know, the way it's looking right now, Cami is definitely going to be, be the playmaker for this squad, and they have just been able to once again really connect with their teammates time and time again as we will see again a one-goal lead will go into the favor of Ottawa Black, and now they look to try and make it two, but the defense from Colorado will hold strong. Defense is holding off well, but Ottawa Black now getting into their own rhythm, right? Again, opportunistic is the play for them. Opportunistic is opportunities any time that they see them. They're going for it, right? Consistently, that's two attackers that they sent and leaving their goal a little bit open here. So Colorado Gold trying to make an advance forward. Great shot out. Kind of going ahead and saying, listen, I'm not going to give it to you for free, even though it does seem free. And now you can see Colorado Gold trying to mount once again another comeback attack as they are down by one goal here at the half. Two minutes and 30 seconds officially gone and now only 225 remaining. Now, once again, a pass going over to, to Cami, but Cami looked like they got a little bit too antsy there. They jumped just a split second too soon. Really did, but this time it's Christopher with a long ball shot. Two more. Two total on Christopher's card here. You can see here. From goal to goal, this time a true goal to goal. It is just perfectly placed. Moses couldn't part the waters in time to be able to make that save. What was funny to me is that Cammy looked like they were going up for the redirect, and Christopher was like, don't touch it, it's going in. So Cammy literally <laughs> called themselves off of that shot, and again, that was great restraint just to make sure that that ball did go in because it was looking tricky. Once again, that shot looked like it might have hit the crossbar. So I understand where Cammy was coming from, thinking that they could redirect that more downward into the center of the goal. But again, great call off coming from Christopher and again, great communication coming from Ottawa Black. They're gonna continue this up and up. And again, Ottawa Black, they're starting to realize they don't have to be as aggressive anymore. Right now, it's all about keeping Colorado gold out of their own territory, right? You're two goals up and you're down to a minute and a half or so. You're, you're happy, you're great. Right now, the whole point, don't get too aggressive, don't go too crazy, but if you find the opportunity, go for it. The main thing, keep a defender always in your pocket. If you make a mistake on this aggression, don't let Colo uh, Colorado Gold get a fast break. You know, I agree with you. Honestly, that's the way that I like to play. You know, I like to be smart, tact uh, tactful, and I like to have a little method to my madness, you know, a little bit more uh, patience. But I'm sorry, that's just not the way it goes for Ottawa Black. They constantly bring the aggression. They are nonstop attack, and they will live or die by this aggression. Again, Christopher really getting in there with that demo play and allowing that shot from Siason to just fall right on in. This is literally just a nonstop attack from Ottawa Black here in game four. For bringing the heat, Ottawa Black said, listen, we don't want to go to a game five. And again, the opportunity could come up, but it's a long road ahead right now. Yeah, trying their best. Zero shots for that player, and it's been difficult, right? For oh, Colorado wait. Gold, they, they've tried so hard and consistently fought for those balls. And I give them huge credit for that, right? They have fought for every single ball that they can. It's just right now it's getting a bit frustrating for them. They're all kind of mixing it up a little bit too much, I feel. Oh, absolutely. And now, you know, they have the three to nil lead and really all they got to do is run out the clock. But, you know, it's definitely possible. It's just not probable for Colorado Gold right now, especially because they have been shut down time and time again by Ottawa Black because they have been keeping the majority of the possession game. It's been a, a good game of keep away. And now they've gotten so down on the clock that they all but solidified their victory. Yep, this is. I mean, well fought from Ottawa, uh, Ottawa Varys Black, right? And yay, Kansas represent, right? This is a squad that is rolling through here pretty nicely and starting things off with the 2-0 uh, on the weeks does give yourself a little bit of leverage moving into those uh, latter weeks as well, right? As you start looking for those playoffs, it's a little bit more dangerous and a little bit more scary to have to walk in with an even record of maybe, you know, say, hey, 3-3, three, three, uh, four, four, you know, anything like that. To start off with the two zero gives yourself a lot of breathing room at the start. It gives you a little bit of a target on your back, but it feels good. It feels real good here. 
Absolutely, and especially with some of the team plays they were pulling off. Again, you, get, you had a couple for the highlight reel. I can only remember, you know, Christopher's double touch coming off of the back wall, being able to use the Fennec Finesse to put that shot on and in, and not to mention their pla their uh, pass plays. Once again, Cammy really coming through with a lot of those flicks to put the touches off of the backboard and really line up a lot of those shots. Definitely the playmaker for their squad. And then not to mention the demo plays. They were bringing the physical plays all abound in that series, and they were able to capitalize. So not only were they able to shine through with the mechanics but they were also able to come through with the rotations and recovery as well so once again a fantastic game and a well-deserved win for ottawa black yeah i loved it and i can't wait to see what more they can do same thing for colorado college right being able to grab a game back in game three huge props to them right to be able to fight back through a, a couple technical issues as well that takes a lot of mental strength so if they can get their mental to match or if they can get their gameplay to match their mental i give them huge props and you know off of an o2 not impossible to recover and not impossible to make it a, a deeper run in the regular season Absolutely not. Definitely going to be looking forward to the future of both of these teams. But I'm also looking toward the future of week number two for Rocket League at the NECC because we're going to have more Rocket League right here for you, the folks at home, the viewers. But we're going to be taking a short break. So don't go anywhere. We got more coming your way in just a little bit.
Well, hello and welcome back once again to Rocket League here on the NECC for week number two. Once again, I am your host, Captain Atsoka, joined by a new face and a new caster. It's none other than Divisions. Divisions, how are you doing today? It's uh, it's dividing, but thank you so much. I'm doing fantastic tonight. I'm looking forward to watching this Challengers Division matchup between University New Haven Esports and the University of Michigan. I think both of these teams... Uh, they kind of fit into that category of teams that are definitely established in the Rocket League community, but have never really broken into, or at least as of right now, haven't really broken into that top, top tier of teams. That's some of my favorites, because these teams have a lot of uh, have a lot of passion, a lot of ambition to really prove themselves uh, among some of the top teams that Rocket League has to offer. That they do. And first look at University of New Haven Chargers. They're going to be bringing Martsy, Winzy, and REX. Again, we're going to be starting with these three. Two juniors and one freshman. And this looks to be a pretty sound lineup. But let's get ready to take a look over at Michigan Esports. Their opponents for this evening. And we're going to have Big Ol' Bobcat, Juventix, and Nickel. I don't... I feel like you picked the wrong, like... Big, big feline animal. You got to go for the Wolverines, right? If you're Michigan Esports. Uh, but uh, I will say I, something that I found thing very, it's very interesting about this matchup is the difference in just the uh, makeup of these two universities. I did a little bit of uh, Googling before this. Michigan Wolverines with both undergraduate and graduate students are pushing 50,000 students total. University of New Haven is only at about 7,000 in comparison so i'm really excited to see how uh they stack up with that in mind i imagine university of new haven maybe has a couple more scholarships or esports than michigan does but uh when you have fifty thousand people in your student body surely you got three of them that are pretty good at rocket Oh, absolutely. And one thing that I'm really excited to see so far is just these two teams going head to head. Because in week number one, both teams managed to pull off a 3-0 sweep against their opponents. So, without further ado, let's get game number one between the Chargers and Michigan Esports underway. Yeah, and we start off with the initial kickoff going towards the direction of Michigan, but it is quickly repelled, and it's actually Marcy from University of New Haven with a nice little rebound play. Let's get a little bit of a people there. Yeah, it was Winzy who got it from midfield, bounced it up against the wall, and Marcy was right there for the assist. So what a beautiful starting off play for University of New Haven, setting the tone early in the series. Absolutely, and again, it's a lot of that midfield presence that is going to dictate how a lot of these goals will be scored. And again, that came off of a huge 50-50, a huge pinch, and they were able to react very quickly in order to turn that one into a goal. And now already, once again, you can see Marcy patrolling the line there at the midfield, as you can see Michigan Esports are struggling to break out of their own half. Yeah, Michigan really needs to try and come up with their own answer. And there is Juventix with one right there. Oh, my goodness. We are moving at a breakneck pace to start this series. That was actually beautiful little uh, air hit uh, from the assisting player. I didn't see the name tag there, but whoever it was did a fantastic job. Some really nice boost control to pluck that ball out of the sky. And again, it's being able to react quickly off of the kickoff, being able to get up in the air quickly. Again, being able to utilize what little boost you do have in order to get the touch into your favor. Once again, Michigan Esports are off on the attack as we just hit the four minute mark and finally the ball will go the other way. Yeah, now all of a sudden, ooh, the goalie there for the side of Michigan with a pretty decent save. There's some really big aggression coming up from New Haven, but now it's all up to Marcy, nice little uh, air jump there if that got past him that was a surefire goal for michigan but instead the ball is going to go back over to the other half a lot more aggression coming up from new haven to start off this uh game one yeah and that was a scary pinch just now you saw that one go all the way from michigan esports territory nearly onto the goal of the university of new haven so again great recovery by the chargers to drop back to defense but now juventics looking for that double touch as they are just constantly peppering the backboard another opportunity oh, will be denied by the crossbar the best goalie in rocket league but they cannot stop juventics from putting this one in now we will see michigan esports take a two to one lead over the Chargers. 
And it was just the relentless aggression from Michigan that a really great job continually setting themselves up for another shot. They never gave up on the play, and that was huge in that specific instance. If you give yourself a fourth, a fifth chance at a really good shot at goal, eventually one of them's going to go in. Eventually the defense for the Chargers is going to crack. But Winsy with a beautiful, uh, beautiful shot there again from the air from the New Haven Chargers. There was nothing that Nickel could do in that situation. That ball was just coming in too hot. It most definitely was. And again, word to the wise, far be it from me to give advice on anything to anyone. But you saw there the goalkeeper was sitting smack dab in the middle of the goal. Believe it or not, on defense, you have positions and rotations to fill out as well. You either are going to want to be in the near post or in the far post. And in that situation, you want to play far post because that shot was literally in the upper 90. And now <laughs> big old Bobcat able once again to answer back with an upper 90 shot of their own. My goodness, we are, what, two minutes into this game and we already have uh, five goals. If this is uh, if this is a preview of what this series has to bring us, my goodness, we are in for an action-packed build day here between these two collegiate squads as uh, the first next kickoff does go towards the Chargers, but it is quickly repelled. Now, you see, it's interesting that you bring that up, Divided, because you're absolutely right. When you see a lot of these goals being scored in game number one, you would think that the next game is going to be an absolute banger. We're going to see even more goals, or we're going to see the same amount. But from what I have witnessed as my own time as a Rocket League caster, more often than not, game number two is going to be a slow one, possibly ending in a 0-1, a 1-1, to -1, maybe at the most a 2-2 to -2 OT. But with that being said, that remains to be seen. I just wouldn't be surprised if we could see a change in momentum and a change of pace after this game number one is now we only have two minutes remaining. Yeah, finally, it feels like these players have gotten a chance to kind of take a breath as they've kind of got, uh, they've kind of taken turns uh, bouncing this ball around to each other, very rarely hitting the ground recently. Uh, both these teams really doing a good job of showing off their uh, prowess with the boosters getting themselves up in the air uh but uh hasn't really resulted in much other than some nice little party tricks yeah well let's see if they can turn a party trick into a goal because that ball hits perfectly on the waterfall nearly leading to a goal but now the recovery once again from michigan esports and the defense will hold strong as they do get the clear and now the 50 at the midfield is going to turn into an opportunity but no one was there to come in with the shot now university of new haven looks to try and build a little offense of their own but hold the phone no one in goal and finally it will be the charges to come in to clear that ball out and when I saw Oryx come out of goal to go for an aggressive play, I held my breath there for a bit because I knew there was nobody in goal but some, again, the boost management. I've been saying that over and over again. They had just enough to get the saves, but that's not going to be enough. Again, just putting shot after shot after shot from Michigan. Marcy put everything into stopping this shot right here. He had nothing to stop Nickel after that one. A nice follow-up there from Michigan. Now up two goals with 45 seconds on the clock. Yeah, once again, Michigan Esports literally just tiring out the defense of the UNH Chargers. And again, that's what you got to do. You got to constantly pepper the net, put shot after shot on target and then just wait for the opportunity for one to fall in. The more shots you take, the more likely you are going to find a goal. And right now, Michigan Esports are just out shooting the Chargers. So 30 seconds left on the clock. Chargers still have two goals to make up here. They've got to get aggressive. We've seen a lot of aggression from this team to start off, but it has not converted into, I think, as many scores as they would like. And Michigan Esports, I'm sure they know all they have to do is play it safe, play defensive, make sure there's no chance that UNH are going to get back into this one. And the Chargers, I think, are going to have to reset for game two. Yeah, and again, why not end it on just an extra goal? Take one home for the road, you know? Just go into the next game even building up more momentum because they didn't need that goal, but it was there, so they might as well take it. And now Michigan Esports sitting comfortably with a three-goal lead, and here in game number one, it is all but over except the crying as now the zero-second mark does hit, and Michigan Esports will take game number one. Yeah, really nice plays there from Michigan overall. I really love to see their tenacity i guess is the word to say there were two specific points in that game where they just never gave up on a play right 
they would they would shoot it would be really close they would either hit the crossbar or it would get saved but every time that happened there was a second play from michigan ready for the follow-up ready to take another shot after the side of university new haven had uh, already used their boost or were out of position from stopping the previous shot uh, so really that does take a decent amount of coordination from the side of michigan to understand that hey uh this guy my team is about to take a goal i need to be in position in case it doesn't go in uh and that i think was the difference maker in that game again uh, it happened twice and there was until that kind of until that goal at the very end where they just got past new haven playing aggressively it was a two goal difference absolutely and then again you know it was really just a great game of keep away coming from the side of michigan they were literally just keeping the possession the majority of the time putting shot after shot on target and confining the side of university of new haven into their own territory they were forced to play defense for the majority of that match and if you're too play uh, too busy playing defense you're not going to have enough time to take any shots of your own so it's no wonder why michigan esports were able to take a game number one but let's see if the university of new haven will be able to make some changes as game number two is officially underway. And this is a team that I'm expecting not to crack under the pressure as University of New Haven gets off to another early start here, getting the first goal in the first couple of seconds for the second time in a row. This is a team that played in the Champions Division last year, and they did fairly well going 6-3 and three in the regular season against some of the best teams that, uh, that NECC had to offer. So this is a team that's used to playing at a high level. They're used to playing from behind. I think the Chargers are not out of this one quite yet. Yeah, honestly, this is a great team. Like you said, they have uh, quite a reputation here in the NECC as well in just Collegiate Rocket League in general. But with that being said, right now, the University of New Haven are starting things off right here in game number two. There's nothing better than coming off of a loss and immediately scoring a goal into the next game. So already, they managed to break the score drought that they were on, and now they are starting off with a one-goal lead against the Michigan Esports squad. As you can see, Michigan Esports are already trying to rectify that and tie us back up. Yeah, this aggression from University of New Haven. They often take their goalie out of the net to try and go for a big aggressive play. Uh, but when there's no one on your side of the field, it means there always has to be someone dashing back when uh, Michigan comes back with their own counterattack. I feel like that has bit them a couple more times than they would have liked so far in this one as Bobby Cat is going to sneak that one by all three members of the uh, of University of New Haven. They were all in the area. Look at this shot. Just kind of squeezes between all of them, finds the hole right in the center of the goal. Yeah, and then again, that was just a great play on the wall coming from their teammate to get that pass down and into the center. So that way, Bobby Cat can take a clean shot. And now, once again, we are tied back up at one apiece. And like you said, this is all going towards their tenacity, not yeah. giving up. Even though they are down one to nil, they still keep that aggression. It's not something they get rid of very easily, even though time and time again, they may receive a little bit of punishment for it. So now Nickel gets a little bit of ball control there, gets it across midfield, but we're kind of in that volleyball portion of the game where the ball's just flying around all over the field. So going back and forth, each team trying to get a little bit of control. And this time around, it is New Charters. What an angle from Marcy does it all by himself. Just look at, look at this right now. It's right in the corner, gets the perfect perfect shot off with just the corner of the nose of the car there was no way that Michigan was expecting that one yeah that was just a little bit of a miscue and miscommunication coming from the goalkeeper and of course the aggressor I think it was Bobby Cat trying to play on ball and then unfortunately they had all their faith that the, that one player up ahead would go for the challenge but it looks as though they were misplaced unfortunate so then it kind of sent off of a uh, a weird cue to the to the defender the goalkeeper to try and get a read on that shot because it was an absolute laser into the back of the net and now once again Michigan esports are going to be fighting to try and equalize as we get ready to approach halftime and now, uh, as Winzy kind of takes it into the corner right now, is met by two members of Michigan. So there isn't much that University of New Haven is going to be able to do. As uh, now we see a demo come in, and Bobby Cat is going to even things up very quickly here for Michigan. It seems like every time University of New Haven try to pull away, Michigan strikes right back. 
that was a nasty pass. Nickel again doing the finesse to get that flick over the Bobcat. Keep in mind, Bobcat went for a touch and missed and then put themselves in the perfect position to receive a pass. That was a great one-two give and go coming from Michigan Esports. But now you can see the Chargers are starting to get a little bit heated on the offensive side as they begin to lay on the shot count against Michigan Esports. Uh, Juventus, though, is going to juke one out as you're going to be able to safely get the ball over to the side, trying to do it all himself, but it doesn't quite work. It's bounced off by the crossbar there, but it, so it does give uh, New Haven time to get themselves back into the goal, get back in on the defense. And, oh, no, Bobby Cat is there again. That's nasty from the team. We're going to bring it up over and over again as Bobby Cat with the jukes. As the goalie in Michigan Esports, again, this was all Bobbycat from midfield. Takes it into the corner, gets it past Rx. A beautiful round around shot and puts Michigan back on top. Absolutely. You got to be careful with these uh, with these corner commits. Again, you know, you definitely want to get the challenge, but when you're going for the corner challenge, send one at a time. They yeah. sent two. Double commits are already tricky enough, but you definitely don't want to do it in the corner. They got punished huge for sending out two goalkeepers at the same time, and then REX, unfortunately, was not in the right position when they went for that double commit. So again, a huge punish coming from the side of Michigan Esports is now they will be looking at a one-goal lead with just over a minute and 20 remaining here in game number two yeah and again this is when the chargers have to start getting aggressive they've got to start going for these power plays where they take the goalie out of the box to try and uh, play forward but that gives them so much more risk here as ooh, that was a nice shot there from Winsy, but the defense from michigan holds strong as we cross a minute to play Absolutely. Only 60 seconds to go. And now look at this cheeky double commit. I just said don't double commit in the corners. Be careful. And what does Michigan Esports do? They double commit in the corner. You're lucky you did not just get scored on just now because that would have been a perfect opportunity for the Chargers to try and equalize. And just when I thought I've said it already, another double commit coming from Michigan Esports. I love the aggression, but you don't want to get in each other's way. Michigan Esports, you have 30 seconds left until you solidify a victory here in game number two. And right now you are in danger of giving it away to the University of New Haven. Yeah, and nice clear there from Juventix. Every clear like that from Michigan is huge. It's going to take valuable seconds off the clock for the Chargers as they are trying to get control of the ball, bouncing wildly from floor to ceiling at the moment. We're in the last 10 seconds of play, and it's been cleared once again. It's going to take an incredible rally from the Chargers to bring this back. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you might as well just run the clock as it does hit zero. And now it's time for rule zero to keep the ball up as long as you can. But Juventix, I guess, is not going to be playing by that rule. They are just <laughs> going to put that one in the dirt to make it hurt for the side of the University of New Haven. And once again, they will take a game win. And now they are up 2-0 in the series. And they could be looking at a 3-0 sweep. They use a new New Haven aggression against them. You mentioned before with the double commit uh with man <laughs> wow that look my goodness oh yeah loose you loose steel coming is? out from Etsaka. <laughs> hey you know what that is right there what that's is that tenacity oh it's yeah the tenacity coming from michigan state and it's and you could feel it you can feel it here in the booth uh as well so again the michigan state um i guess the the energy is really there and you know they're vibing very well on yeah. the field as well and they're you're really feeding off of each other to bring that extra layer of tenacity to their shots and i think it's reflecting in the score line we're definitely seeing a lot more when it comes to that tenacity i think there's i want to say a little more structured to it as well based on what we're seeing uh i mean compared to what we're seeing off of haven right when we see michigan they really do play off of each other they try to position each other well for each other's passes I'm not seeing that as much from New Haven. It's kind of like when we see New Haven go super aggressive, they just kind of say go and they all rush forward. But it feels like they aren't uh, in in good positions to uh, feed off of each other's passes as often as Michigan has been. Well, here we go. You know what time it is. Let's get five minutes on the clock because game number three between Michigan Esports and the University of New Haven is underway. Yeah, the Chargers are, have their backs against the wall in this one. Down two to nothing in the series. They've got to try and muster themselves up for a reverse sweep here. 
uh, and try and keep their perfect season alive. Michigan Esports, I must say, uh, not only uh, go not only going fighting for 2-0 in the series, they're fighting for 6-0 in maps so far in this series, if they can take this one away. Yeah, but already, once again, they're starting early. They're able to get one goal on the board and get the first goal here of game number three. So they are not looking to get swept here. They want to continue on as Marcy, once again, is able to get the first goal and give the Chargers a one goal early lead. And that is the third game in a row where the University of New Haven Chargers get away with the early goal to start the game. Both times before, Michigan Esports were able to quickly respond and even up the score of their own. Are we going to see the same thing this time? Even if the University of New Haven Chargers don't double up on this goal, if they can take a significant amount of time off the clock before Michigan finds a way to respond, that would be huge for them to build their confidence as uh, they start to dig themselves out of this hole. Yeah, and honestly, you know, again, I'm about to give you a little captain's analysis here. And if I'm capping, by all means, say captain's captain. But I really think the Chargers need a two-goal lead. They have got to get a second insurance goal on the board because Michigan Esports, again, is just too aggressive to not get one goal on the board. If you constantly keep them at that one-goal deficit, they are eventually going to find one. They constantly take shots. Their shot count is insanely high, and they are going to be able to score. So they're going to need that two-goal oh! lead. And there it is, Marcy from all all the way downtown is able to shoot a liner into the back of the net, giving them that two gold cushion. And you catch Juventix going for a bit of a reset on the acceleration, didn't have the speed necessary to get in and uh, block that goal. And now this is where we see the difference. This is the first time University of New Haven has started the series up two to nothing. It's a significant, much more significant deficit here for Michigan to try and get themselves out of, but they still have over three minutes to do it. Yeah, that they do. Still plenty of time to go here in game number three, but right now the Chargers looking oh so well, but they better be careful when it comes to double commits like that because, again, a punishment is not far behind a double commit. And now, once again, we can see the midfield pass, but it's off target. That could have been huge for Michigan. Yeah, and that's a rare miss there for Michigan. We've seen these passes uh, be on point pretty consistently throughout this series, but could have been a really great opportunity to cut the deficit in half. Unfortunately, doesn't go through as now both teams kind of jostle for the ball, but it is University of New Haven on the offensive right now uh, as Michigan looks for the clear here. And yes, Bobby Cat's going to get it. And this is an empty goal at the moment if Michigan can capitalize. Well, let's see. Again, we're past halftime now, so they're only, they are only going to have half of regulatory time to try and get two goals on the board, which they've had no problem doing in the past, but now they're looking down the barrel of a two-goal deficit. It's going to be a little harder when morale and momentum is not on your side as the Chargers continue to ride that wave of momentum into even more of an aggressive offense as, once again, you can see the passes are crossing the plane, but no one being able to connect to put any of these shots into the back of the net. Two minutes left on the clock, and this has been great defense from New Haven. Now that they're at a two-goal lead, they know they don't really need to go super aggressive anymore. They just, they can pump the brakes. They can play defensively, make sure that there is always someone available to uh, block the shots of Michigan. It is on them, and but, oh my gosh, that was a really nice save there from Michigan. A nice little top spin to keep it away. Uh, and University of New Haven, they are trying to make this a three-goal lead right now. They really want to put this away and say, we are here. Don't dismiss us just yet. We will not go down without a fight. Well, let's see if they are going to go down at all, as it will be another shot on coming from Lindsay. Off the pass here from Marcy. Again, a nice connection there coming off of the sidebar, and Lindsay being able to put that one right on in to give themselves now a 3 to nil lead here in game number three. New Haven taking a page out of Michigan's book there. Goes off the side of the wall right next to the goal and Winsey was right there for the rebound shot. That's what I love to see from the University of New Haven. Finally, that communication, that positioning seems to be on point here with a minute left on the clock and Michigan down 3-0. It's going to take something special for them to come back into this. 
Well, let's see if they got what it takes as Juventix gets bumped clear across the pitch. And now we'll go back into the corner with no boots to work with as this one does go high. But Nickel is able to take this one back out towards the mid. Find Juventix there at the midfield. And now Marzi trying to keep this one out and towards the corner and will predict the touch in the pass to send it back into the Michigan Esports half. 30 seconds left on the clock now. Michigan getting a little bit desperate here, flying all around the ball, trying to get something, anything going. But those strategies that got them the wins in games one and two, it seems like New Haven is starting to adjust. They seem to be able to count them a lot better and bring some nice plays of their own. And it's looking like University of New Haven, they're going to be able to take at least one game off this series. 6-0 is not going to be in the cards for Michigan Esports as University of New Haven they take one and bring us to a game four Yep, that they do. And I got to tell you, not only were they able to take a win off of Michigan, but they did it in a spectacular fashion. This, yep. I think, was the first shutout that we have seen so far this evening. And with that being said, it came off, off of a two-game loss. They lost games number one and game number two, and then they came back in game number three with a vengeance. They were able to step up huge in the offensive, but they were able to come in clutch with a lot of defensive saves, 50-50s, and interceptions as well. So once again, not only was the University of New Haven able to get it done on the offensive side of the ball but they proved they know how to handle the defensive side as well yeah and i was saying at the end of game one this is an experienced team they've been around the block here in necc they are not going to give up they i think they have the mentals to potentially pull off this reverse sweep like i said in the champions division last season against the best that necc has to offer i think this is a team that really wants to prove that they still deserve to be considered among those uh those top teams well they definitely have the opportunity as once again we are going to keep this series going and now it is at two to one keep in mind our previous matchup uh, had ended in three to one fashion so i'm kind of wondering is it going to happen again that remains to be seen and it's going to be up to the chargers to see if we are going to continue this series but without further ado let's get five minutes on the clock as you will see game number four now officially underway and already <laughs> it will be a goal coming from the university of new haven well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Four games, four early goals from the University of New Haven. They have been dominating these first kickoffs. That they have, and I gotta tell you, that was insanely impressive just to see how quickly they were able to react. At first, I thought Marcy was gonna get the double touch, but then the follow-up from their teammate to put that one in. And now another will find oh, the no. back of the net for the Chargers, and they get a cheeky low five in celebration. By... Goodness, it seems like the Chargers have been unlocked here. A nice touch there from Arix uh, to control that ball and make sure that it goes in the direction that he wants it to go. And Michigan Esports, 12 seconds in the game four, already find themselves down to nothing. This was the deficit that basically killed them in game one. And they are, and they don't want to be down so much so early. I guess the silver lining is you have plenty of time to come back. That is true. You know, only 30 seconds gone. I mean, granted, they're down two goals, but if anybody can score two goals in rapid succession, Michigan certainly can. Oh. And they will get one on the board. Juventix able to find the back of the net off of an insane double touch read, literally off the crossbar and off the sidebar as well. Now they are back in this game. They are only down one goal. And you really needed that from Michigan. After getting shut out the last game, I'm sure there was a little bit of nerves on that side being like, oh man, do we still know how to score against this team? And Juventus says, don't worry guys, I got this. And it manages to put it through. So that's a nice little sigh of relief there for Michigan. And if you're a Michigan fan, they still have the offense to stand up this Chargers squad. Absolutely, and like you were saying, coming off of an unfortunate shutout for Michigan, it is so important to get that goal on the board because not only are you putting yourself back in the game, but you're ending the score drought. There's nothing worse than going into the next game of a series on a score drought. So now it is officially over. Michigan Esports managed to find the back of the net, and they should have a little bit more momentum heading forward. And now we see a little bit of a rally here for Michigan trying to tie this one up. But a nice there from Marcy is going to go out of the goal. It's going to try to go from coast to coast there. 
but it is going to be stopped for the moment by Nickel. But again, these teams, they do not give up on the play. They're constantly looking for ways to extend the drive, keep the ball bouncing in their direction, and give themselves a chance at a score. Yeah, well, you can see the Chargers are not letting up on their offense as they, once again, are pulling the defenders out of their position by taking so many hot shots on target. And now Marcy will try once again. But I got to tell you, the recovery for Michigan right now and their defensive rotation has been absolutely on point. They are getting save after save. Now they just have to clear it out of their own half. They haven't been able to do that for a little bit here. It has been constant aggression fear from New Haven. Before, in the first couple of games, they were, it was repelled fairly easily from Michigan, but it really has just been a non-stop, and right as you think they're going to be able to get it out of their half, there is kind of the midfield player there. What should be the goalie, instead playing at around the neutral zone, <laughs> trying to make sure that it stays on Michigan's side for as long as possible. Yeah, well now once again, the University of New Haven takes to the attack. They send to a very risky play. Again, the tactical whiff is definitely a solidified mechanic in Rocket League, but that was a huge gamble, and they are lucky. They should be counting their lucky stars that they were not punished, as now Juventix does go for a little bit of an unorthodox, uh, unorthodox touch there at the midfield, but, you know, no harm, no foul. Now we are at the two-minute warning, and the Chargers are still up one. Yeah, and... The Chargers have decided, hey, best defense is a good offense. You don't have to worry about protecting your goal if the ball has stayed on the Michigan Esports side of the field for the, pretty much the entire game ever since Michigan got that first score. Michigan really has to figure out something offensively. I mean, defensively, they have been fantastic. They have blocked something like a dozen shots from the Chargers in the last minute, but they've got to be able to put together a shot of their own to bring us back to a draw. And right now they have the opportunity, but a huge block and a huge save coming from the side of the Chargers. And now trying to find the backboard, it was deflected. But, you know, with a, just over a minute left to go, you got a minute and 15 to make something happen. They have got to bring out the physical plays. They have got to go for the bumps. And what a missed touch coming from the goalkeeper of Michigan Esports as that one will just fall in for the University of New Haven. And look at the angle there from Nickel. I think was expecting more of a line drive. It has, has been most of the goals here for University of New Haven. Instead, it's a dribbler. And they are not expecting that. Michigan goes a little bit too high. And the Chargers are up to once again, putting so much pressure on Michigan to avoid a decisive game five. Absolutely. And now you can see Bobby Cat trying to get the job done. They're down to... Uh, they're down two goals, but they still have an opportunity. They can still get the job done. It's just going to be all about execution. But right now, the University of New Haven, like we were talking about earlier, like you have specifically mentioned, Divide, is that they're keeping Michigan Esports confined to their own half. They're saying that the best defense is a good offense, and it has been working for them. So now they're just going to keep that play style alive for the next 30 seconds. Yeah, that's all they've got to do. And I got to say, one of something that's been really interesting for me when I look at the way the Chargers are playing this offense is that they're not necessarily going all in. They're not throwing all three players at the goal at the same time. They're keeping one player positioned at around the midfield point so that whenever Michigan goes for a, a clear, that Chargers player playing at midfield is in a perfect spot to bounce it right back towards the Michigan goal, forcing them to play defense for a majority of this game. And after being down 2-0 to start the series, the University of New Haven Chargers have brought us all the way back to a map five. A reverse sweep is looking very possible. Oh, more than possible. I mean, right now, you got to also consider the momentum that is going to be on their side as well. You know, they were able to win two back-to-back -back unanswered games, and now they're going to be going into game number three on a winning streak. That is massive. That's going to be a huge boost of morale and momentum. So, if anything, I would say that they're going to be going into game number five with a little bit of an advantage. Oh, I would say so as well, especially considering the fact that they have outscored Michigan 6-1 to one in the last two games. And that one goal by Michigan, it was kind of a heroic uh, singular play from Juventus there with the double touch. It was a fantastic play, but it was really just one person pulling that off. It wasn't the uh, passing, relentless on the play, uh, bouncing off each other like it was in the first couple of games for Michigan. If that's what you need to do to get points, I don't think it's going to be enough to beat this New Haven team. 
Well, it's time for that game number five, and you know what that means. We are headed to Champions Field, where all Rocket League is finally settled and dealt with. Champions Field, literally where champions are being made and where they are displayed. So it's going to be interesting to see how this final game will wrap up this series between the Chargers and Michigan Esports. What a place to end off this series, and what a place to... Uh, what a series we've had between these two squads, UNH Chargers and Michigan Esports. After going 3-0 to start the series, I think have established themselves as two heavyweights in this challengers division. The question is, who will come out on top? The winner of the series will surely have a massive statement on their resume as we go uh, later on in the season. Absolutely, and now you can see a good wall touch there coming from Marcy, being able to get that clear off of the wall. Definitely bought them a little time to try and get their defense back up and in the right. As you can see, the demos are finally start starting to come out from Michigan Esports as they flex their muscles a little bit and will take the ball back into the Chargers territory. Yes, but Nickel has had some solid defense throughout this series, is going to Eat the offensive charge on this one. It's just meandering around in front of the Chargers goal, but there is no one there to follow up on it. So it is going to be cleared out by the Chargers here as they go on another aggressive tear of their own. Yeah, and look at this. Whenever your teammate doesn't have the boost to, you know, take a solid shot, sometimes you just got to throw them into the ball. Again, going for the pool ball shot. Unfortunately, it was saved and cleared away. So no goal for Michigan. But they try again. <laughs> and Bobby Cat able to put this one just underneath the crossbar to find the back of the net. And I got to say, what a pass from Juventus. And the streak is over here. This is the first time in five games where Michigan Esports has the first goal. I mean, I don't even know, I don't even know what to say. Like the matrix is broken. Well, here we go as the Chargers look to try and equalize. They do not want to sit at this one goal deficit for very long because we already know how much Michigan can do with just a one goal advantage. And now you can see the pass does come through and it will go on from Oryx. What a one, two, give and go pass play. Marcy puts this pass on the money and Oryx there to send that one home. And now we are back tied yet again at one goal apiece. You absolutely love to see that teamwork from the Haven Chargers from the center to the net. And the University of New Haven are looking on point. They look to have gotten just stronger and stronger as this series has gone on. But again, the early goal for Michigan means it is still a one to one draw. University of New Haven, they've got to put one more in the net. And Marcy almost has a nasty angle there, but it goes just a little bit wide. Bobby Cat's going for another heroic shot from the other side of the field, but it is blocked by Aris. That it is. And now Michigan Esports are on the receiving end of some offense and nearly on the receiving end of a demolition. That would have been huge, but the demolition was not on target. Is now a booming clear. Will come out from Juventix as this one will go down to Winzy, but not before they bite the dust and get demolished. Ooh, boy. It is now a 3-2 to two power play here for Michigan for the moment. That is, of course, over now. And while that happened, they weren't even able to get it out of their not even like their side of the field not even able to get it out of the corners finally gets it back to midfield but again that midfield player from uh, the chargers is bouncing it right back in michigan side of the field this is exactly what we saw in game four unh chargers keep the pressure up yeah and i gotta tell you if they constantly decide to try and double commit on a lot of these challenges michigan esports is going to find themselves in a little bit of trouble because that's not once now but twice we have seen the goalies double commit and it was nearly turned into a goal by the chargers and now finally michigan esports gets a clear yeah you say that but the second you do rx is there once again at midfield to bounce it right back over the ball kind of going wildly around the series right now. Trying to find control is Michigan trying to take the lead as we kind of go to a stop here at the corner. That was a huge demo, but again, the backup coming from the Chargers was absolutely phenomenal. Being able to support their teammate even when they get taken out of the game entirely. And now it will be REX trying to apply the pressure on offense. A huge miss, but lucky for them, Bobby Cat was there to come through and clean that one up. 
as now once again we can see the Michigan Esports squad starting to sweat a little bit in their own half. And all of a sudden we have just one minute remaining still tied at a one-to-one -one draw. Both teams being very cautious here in this Game 5 situation. This is by far the lowest scoring game of the series right now and it is going to be broken by Nichols going to come in with the assist from Juventus. Got a nice bounce off of the corner to get it into the middle. And Nickel gets there just in time to break the tie. And without a doubt, the play of that game was the double demo coming from Michigan Esports. That was absolutely huge. And I, I'm pretty sure that was actually Bobby Cat that came through and literally swept away the defense that was in net. And that really is what led to that goal. That was a huge demo play, but now Lindsay being able to take it by themselves with the double touch to tie us back up yet again. My goodness, what a beautiful angle there from RX Juventus. I mean, there was just nothing that they could do there. There was no boost in the world that would have gotten you to the ball in time as just as soon as the tie was broken, we are tied up once again with 30 seconds left on the clock and both teams looking to go 2-0 to start this NECC season. I gotta tell you, this is this has the makings of a Game 5 overtime, but the clear does come out and now Michigan Esports still are going to hold on to this tie 2-2. Now Winzy trying to take the aggression here, gets a flick, but it does not go far. And now Juventix trying to run out the last few remaining seconds and trying to get a goal on the board to avoid OT as the pass does go to the mid, but the clear comes out. And now with no more regulatory time, the ball will stay live and we will head into overtime. And now it is just all about who can score first. This game will keep going until one ball gets into the net. And when that happens, we will know the victors of this series. Ventix had a pretty solid opportunity there, but it is blocked by Winzy for the moment. Here's a double tap, and Nickel puts it in for Michigan Esports. It was looking tough for them at the start. They went up 2-0 were looking tough offensively in games three and four, but when they needed to, Michigan comes back and they take the overtime victory over New Haven. What a game. Absolutely, and that's the way you really want to start off week number two. Granted, we had one game before, but that game right there, that's what we come here to see. That was absolutely fantastic by both teams. Again, University of New Haven was able to take this one all the way to a game five, looking down the barrel of a reverse sweep. But at the bitter end in game five overtime, Michigan Esports were able to come out on top, and they were able to find that perfect read there at the end to get the ball on target and narrowly escape with a victory. But but again, great game to watch and a good yeah. game all around for both Michigan Esports and the University of New Haven. Yeah, on the side of New Haven, they come away with the loss this time around. But my goodness, they fought every step of the way. And I'm sure that uh, I think this matchup in the playoffs, I mean, it's a little early to be thinking about the playoffs here in NECC. But with a match like that between two teams that were 1-0 to start the series, I think this is a matchup that we could be seeing again before the year is over. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But speaking of seeing things before they're over, we're not over yet here at the NECC Week 2 of Rocket League. We got more coming your way, but we're going to have to take a quick, short break. So do not go anywhere. We will have more Rocket League for you right here at the NECC. <laughs>
Well, hello and welcome back once again to Rocket League on the NECC for week number two. Once again, I am your host, Captain Etsoka, joined by the spiciest caster in the NECC. It's Infernosis. Well, I don't know about spiciest. I can't even handle salt and pepper on my meals, but it's a pleasure to be here. Sorry we're breaking the multiverse here for a moment. Broken the illusion at first, but I'm super excited to be here for Rocket League. And I'm super excited to get these games in a wave. We've got a team that didn't even play in week one coming up here first for this game. So, I mean, they got to prove themselves here early to try to set, cement themselves at least with a 1-0 start. Oh, absolutely. And first up, it's going to be SIUE white let's take a look at their roster as they are going to be bringing in nova mika and nava now those are going to be some tongue twisters waiting to happen as we get this game underway and already we can see that they're bringing two freshmen to the fold here for this game so again this is going to be interesting to see how these two younger players will do as we get ready to head into our matchup here today Young Blood kind of cements yourself early as well, kind of get things started over to the opposing side of the MACU Evangels, Mid America Christian University. They're bringing out uh, Cather, Cass, and Quinn all right off the board. It's going to start themselves off strong. And they also have two freshmen and one senior, a bit of seniority to try to lead that squadron. It's going to be a big question, though, with these two young teams and these young rosters. How really disciplined will they be throughout this game? Will they overextend past their goal? Will they send three too often? And will they unfortunately kind of fall victim to that young? mindset yeah not only that but they also had a day off in week number one they got a week one by so they didn't even really get a chance to you know get their feet wet you know hit the ground running whereas you know on the other side for SIUE white they were able to actually take a win that went all the way to game five so not only did they get their practice in but they got a good run for their money you know they were able to get really warmed up so I'm wondering how will it affect the um the MACU squad now that they're going to be heading into week number two you know, they're going in fresh. This is going to be their first game of the season. Now, we see this quite often. A lot of teams, we have a lot of teams here in the NECC this season in general for every game and every esport we have here throughout the league. And we've seen a lot of teams kind of fall victim to the mindset of saying, okay, well, we're off this week. Let's just kind of wait things out. Maybe watch some other teams head into the next week and be prepared. You still got to be scrimming, still got to be practicing, still got to be very well versed. And to be fair, there's a huge advantage for the team that did not play in week one. There's going to be at least a precedent set saying, we know this team can run. We know this team can play. We know they can drive, so to say. We got to come with everything right off the bat give them that a game and try to get that early goal to try to submit yourself early absolutely and then again you know when we're talking about rocket league it is a very momentum based esport as honestly i think a lot of esports are momentum based let's be real but the thing about rocket league is is that you always want to go in with your right foot forward and honestly being able to come away with a game five victory is only going to boost your momentum and morale overall you're going to be feeling yourselves going into week number two but with that being said you know they had that extra week to do a little bit of their homework over there on the side of the macu so once again they could bring a little bit more to this game but i'm being told that we're going to be taking a very short break so do not go anywhere we will be right back with these two teams going head to head
Well, hello and welcome back once again to Rocket League right here at the NECC for week number two. We are getting ready to get this game underway between SIUE White and MACU Evangels. Once again, I am your host, Captain at Soka, joined on the desk by Infernosis. These two teams are ready and ready to go, revving those engines in their spawn and looking to get things started. Let's not keep them at bay. Let's let them roll all fours. as kickoff immediately goes in favor of SIUE White. They'll send it over the corner to try and quickly clear this one out, but so far it's really just a battle of wits in mid. Well, again, we're, we're expecting to see a lot of aggression early on. It is game number one, and already, you know, even in our last series, game number one ended with a total of, like, six to seven goals on the board. So let's see if we're going to see a lot of goals being made. But so far, SIUE White is going to be doing a good job of keeping goals out of the net, being able to play a little defense, but that's not going to stop the MACU from taking shots. Quick and close call. They managed to put this one back in the middle. They'll meet it to try and slow down its momentum. Send it back over the SAU white side. It kind of gets across that central section. Nobody will meet it to the opposing end of Nava. Nava has a little bit of assistance going forward, but the MACU will manage to clear it up to their corner and center it up once again. A good shot opportunity, but Nava will make sure that it goes over the net, but a good shot once again back and forth. No team letting up so far with these shots on goal. And now with just a minute gone already, we are still tied nil to nil. Two buttery bagels there on the scoreboard. And really not one team getting the advantage over the other. It just seems like a little sloppy play. And speaking of, a huge whiff coming from the Evangels to leave the net open for the ICUE, for the SIUE white team to get the first goal of the series. That's just a little bit of an overextension early off the bat for them. One player went to center trying to meet the ball, initially missed it, goes to corner, he missed again. And well, Cather just was not able to make it back in time because of that. Rough start for them, but that does submit SAUE with that first blood, so to say. Speaking of which, a demo goes forward. That's a little bit of a breather to try to say, hey, reset, center that ball again and go for another shot opportunity. But it looks like SAU White are just trying to re-send that ball deep down mid and quickly dropped away by Nova. Yeah, once again, Nova's going to take another shot here, but it does get saved, but hold the phone. That one nearly going in, but somehow, some way, the Evangels managed to hold strong on the defense and clear this ball out. High ball once again. Kez is on the wall trying to ride this one. Clears it up. Needs to be met in the air, but it's going to be SIU White to do so instead. Micah has the spot. Nava will try to meet them once again. And this looks like a good spot for MACU. The Evangels to try to send this one back up. Shot opportunity is there, but note it's only Quinn Ford on the strike. No one there on that cross, and they miss another opportunity. Yeah, and I got to tell you right now, I'm loving the teamwork that I'm seeing coming from the side of SIUE White. Oh. They have a lot of faith in their teammates and also a lot of faith in themselves, taking a lot of high-risk, high-reward plays. But so far, they have yet to really find a punishment for it. You know, they're doing pretty well when it comes to recovering from the offense to defensive transition. And now, once again, the Evangels will try and get a goal on the board, but it will simply be denied. Think how fast the SIU White side has been on that transition from defense to the assault back towards goal. The Avengers have only ever at most had one defender in that net at that time because they send to so often. Because of that, they leave their net wide open. An easy demo popped in by Nova. And there's Micah to meet them in that net to send it forward. That's 2-0 start for the SAUE. And again, that was a fantastic uh, pass play. And you know, I say it time and time again. I said it a million one times last season. Well, guess what? I'm going to say it a million more times this season. It's the pass plays that win the games. And there's nothing I love more than some good old fundamental pass plays being played out on the field. And SIUE White were able to execute that perfectly. Again, going from the pass from Micah, again, being able to connect was fantastic. And now with just two minutes left to go, it will be SIUE to maintain a 2 to nil lead. This is just a battle for the Evangels to try to give themselves back a chance here for competitiveness sake. Fortunately, they have not really been able to get some solid shots off on goal. Kev was able to send it up one more time. Another one there, and it's wide open. As soon as you start to dig, they'll bury it through the net as Quinn scores a really nice one set up by Kev. Oh, absolutely. Once again, like I said, it's the pass plays. It's going to get the job done. And not only that, but that looked eerily similar to the pass play that we saw between Micah and Nova previously. Again, they're all bunched up in the corner, and all it took was one good touch to get it around not one but two defenders to find their teammate there in the mid and send the ball into the back of the net. And now the Evangels are within one goal of equalizing against SIUE White. 
and that weighs a lot now on the shoulders of SIUE White. They could have set back a little bit knowing they had a two goal lead. Now they have to continue to bear back down and to make matters worse. It's set up on center stage and Cather sends it home. An amazing shot off the back of an easy bench. And that's gonna go all the way. Great job once again. That ties things out a 2-0 star for SIUE. And now we're tied up with the Evangels catching. Well, here we go as we get ready once again to see if any one of these teams are going to be able to break this tie or will we be heading to a game one overtime. Once again, you will see it will be SIUE White to try and take the aggression early, but now the rebuttal coming from the MACU squad is going to try and relay some of that offense now. As you can see, Kez going in for the touch, but it's a little high. And now back over towards the side as a bang and clear. We'll go back out towards the middle, and now a nice little pass play there at the midfield. Definitely showing a lot of synergy from the side of SIUE. It's now a possible goal for the Evangels. Is right there on the line, and finally, Quinn sends it home. Such a better job by the Evangels to secure another goal. They've been playing out of their minds the last two and a half minutes saying, hey guys, we gotta pick this up. We're not gonna let SIU get away with everything. We saw the initial aerial, the crossover to center. Kedge stayed over there the entire time leading for the 2-1 front. And what a great setup to eventually finish off for that goal. Now the ball's in SIUE's court to try and make sure they can at least secure an overtime here for this game one. But they're going to have to get it that side of the field first. They're setting up for their own aerial combo. Nava sends it to Micah, but no one's going to meet it in the corner bar of the Evangels. Yeah, and like you said, you know, they don't have a lot of time now. Only 22 seconds remaining to try and get this equalizing goal. And right now, you got to see that the Evangels are definitely stepping up their aggression. They're going with the best defense as a good offense approach and trying to keep SIUE White confined into their own half as now we approach the final few seconds. Time ticking down. SIUE White have one more chance. Shot goes forward against the wall. Sets up for the second, but it's just off target. The ball will hit the floor and the Evangels will guarantee themselves that first game. Great job for them. We obviously saw a bit of a rocky start as they went into a huge deficit of two goals, but what a triumphant return, only needing two and a half minutes to find three to eventually win it out. Absolutely, and you got to keep in mind, they were playing at a deficit for what felt like the entirety of the match, and then within the first, well, rather the last couple of minutes, you know, they really were able to turn it around, where on the side, you know, you're looking at SIUE, and they were ahead for a good moment of that match there, and then, you know, they were rocking the early game, being able to really come through and steal a lot of that momentum, but it just goes to show that there is plenty that can be done in a short five minutes of Rocket League, and right now, I got to say, the Evangels are probably pretty happy that they were able to sneak away with that game one win well they start things off strong but now SIUE have a little bit more of a glimpse as to how the rest of this game will go down balls in their court to try to figure things out I think honestly the aggression they had early their ability to transition from the defense quickly to the attack that netted them those first two goals we obviously realized very late in that one that that same strategy is not going to work they need to be a little bit more on the defensive you mentioned in the later half of that game when we saw the Evangels managed to take that lead in that 3-2 fashion they started to play into the a big offense is still the same as a good defense and that aggression, that ability to essentially throttle down to the opposition, it's suffocating and it's a big problem for the defense. Yeah, they really moved their back line from their own net and they put that line right there at the midfield. So that way, they're just constantly playing the defense, but now instead of playing on their own net, they're just simply playing at the midfield, keeping the other team, SIUE, confined into their own half. And if they're confined to their own half, they can't score any goals. But let's see if SIUE will be able to break out of their own half here in game number two as we get this one underway. Oh, kickoff a bit rocky, unfortunately, for SIUE White. A shot opportunity netted early for the Evangels, but just barely missing as it hits the side crossbar. Nova now trying to fight for a battle inside mid. Unfortunately, still falls to SAU White. They'll center it up quite nicely. Cather sets the team there and tries to clear it over the top, but no one's meeting it again. It's too slow for them. They're sending all three players in goal, making sure they're only sending one at a time to meet it so they don't overextend. Yeah, now you can already see the Avengers look like they're going for some nuttery buttery plays here. Again, they're going off the ceiling. They're trying to get some insane aerial touches. And now they're going off of the backboard, trying to connect. But Micah was able to break up that pass, but hold the phone. Kez oh! is able to get the one-two touch off the backboard to put it on and in. Oh, 
you see plays like this all the time. It goes in the highlight reel. Cass has got to feel good after that one. A one-man army right when SAUE thought they got the little bit of breathing room necessary considering just how long that possession was theirs and still incapable of actually sending it farther back to the opposing side. The rough start, but that is the Evangels finally finding first goal here in this game too. Yeah, and only a couple of seconds. You know, we're finally getting one minute off the clock. And already we have ourselves a highlight real worthy play. But let's see if SIUE White can counter is now. We can see Quinn over there at the midfield. And a, what a, an attempt going from Kez. Looks like they had a lot going on. But Kathler is able to find a goal themselves. Finding the back of the net off of a pretty cheeky touch coming out of the corner and an unfortunate double commit coming from the side of SIUE. We've seen that now twice in a row. Right before that entire play started to brew up, both players that were initially in the net for SIUE White both jumped the gun to go for the aerial to meet that ball up high. And the Evangels continue to take advantage of that weakness, that weakness of communication. And I think that's kind of where we're seeing SAU kind of tear themselves apart. They need to talk a little bit better, work themselves as a team, cohesively as the unit that they are. And it looks like once again, it's going to be a hard fought game as the Evangels are giving them no breathing room. Yeah, now you can see Nava once again going to try and go up high, but look at the rebuttal coming from the Avengers. I'm thinking that one's going to go off the backboard, possible pass opportunity, but no. So quickly are the Avengers able to adapt and get insanely high up on the back wall to deny any passes along the wall. That is incredible heads-up defense coming from MACU. <sighs> Just keep that advantage, and it looks like they're going to go ahead and make sure it goes even further. Three minutes on the clock, left to play, and three goals already scored in this game. Just looks like the advantage is to come out saying, we're not even going to let SAU bring up two like they did in that game one. We want to finish this one in a 3-0 series, ensuring that there's no chance people can question our place here in the NECC. Well, three minutes still to go here, so still plenty of time for SIUE White to find themselves on the board and try to equalize. Still a long way to go. As you can see, Micah, 12.05, will now run smack into the wall and not the ball as Nava now goes up high, is able to put an end to that push. But Cather is there again to go off the backboard, gets Ooh. a follow-up touch, goes off the crossbar, and it will be Nava to put an end to that aggression, narrowly evading another goal. Nava with the nine plays right there. A bit of a tricky situation. They were expecting them to knock it high. Instead, dribbled it low to the ground. But it's still not going to stop the Evangels. Kez by themselves again. Steadies that ball in mid, saying, I've got this one secured. I'll drop it back down, and I'll send it deep through that net. Another great situation for the Evangels to position themselves in, and the scoreline gets even further in their favor. Absolutely, and you got to feel for the defender in that play. You know, they were the last one back, the shot was being taken, and they were in a 2v1 scenario, so you really have to take a 50-50 uh, guess on whether they're going to go for the shot or if they're going to go for the pass, and then you have to defend as best as you can. So, um, again, an unfortunate uh, series of events for that uh, third player there, that last defender on the side of SIUE White, but now the MACU Evangels will have a commanding 4-0 lead. You can feel the confidence just absolutely exuding from the Evangels. Their main defensive back, the player they're situating, what should be in goal, is lying in midfield. Kaz has been able to transition back, has a little bit of assistance consistently from just all the teammates of Cather coming back as well to try and center that one again. It has just been an army of the Evangels, and every time you think maybe SAU White can center that one back to the opposing side, just clear it away from their net, it's right back in their face. There's no room to maneuver, and because of that, the Evangels just position themselves with a three-man army up front for another goal. And again, this is just all fundamental pass plays, and it's the pass plays that win the games. That time, we got the luxury of seeing a three-way pass play. That went through all three players from the Evangel side, and they were able to make a goal out of it. Again, absolutely fantastic. And there's nothing I love more than a team that knows how to share the ball, that knows how to share the sugar, you know, spread the wealth a little bit. And they are going absolutely insane in the assist column right now, and they're looking to keep it going. It's almost like every single touch the Evangels go to a teammate. Quinn was already positioned in the air to try and knock it down. Unfortunately, just slightly missed for them. And because of that slight mistake, SIU we might have a man advantage heading downfield. They'll squeeze it around that corner. And unfortunately for the player of Quinn, it just tags the right bumper and goes straight into their own net. Unfortunate for them, but it's still the Evangels with a compounding lead. Oh, absolutely. But still, that, regardless of who 
touched the ball last. That is still a goal for SIUE. And it does say in Rocket League Proverbs, line 38, verse 22, that we take those. In MACU, they're going to take those. I'm going to make sure to write that one down so I have it for the next time I come into this one. We'll try to bring it out again. Demo to give a little bit of space, make it two. <laughs> the Evangels are saying, you're not going to allow anyone in goal. Not only are we going to suffocate you by taking all your boosts in back corners, we're also going to take your players and do a bit of a respawn timer. Yeah, I got to tell you, for a team that is called the Evangels, they are playing like some demo demons. I got to tell you, they are bringing a lot of the physical play, and they are making it look oh so good. And now they're only one goal away from the infamous Brazil. But with 50 seconds left to go, SIUE White is looking down the barrel, unfortunately, of a game to loss. But still, a little time left on the clock to make something happen. Meets up in the air. Kaz sits a nice spot. Puts it back over to Gather. Just trying to maybe play it off the wall again. A slight miss, though, and that will allow for Nava to maybe tag it. But another miss in return. It's just kind of small mistakes like that that are really hurting the SAUE wide side. Nova will try to get that a little bit of assistance off the back of Micah. Nava goes high, and that's finally another score for them. But with only 22 seconds left, there's four goals you have to do to add up. At this point, I think it's a consolation goal to try and bring that confidence back up to a manageable level. Oh, exactly. And keep in mind, that's still not all for naught. Granted that the game may be out of your grasp, but you do want to get as many goals as possible, like you said, to build up that momentum and, you know, kind of get your head right heading into the next game. You know, like after this one, you're going to be looking down the barrel of a 3-0 sweep. So you want to do everything within your power to make sure that you're ready for it. And right now, once again, the bump and demo plays are coming out huge for MACU, and they're just going to tack on another one. Man, the Evangels are just not leaving any prisoners. Everyone being destroyed, demoed, cleared out from the goal. And, I mean, they're just getting swept up in that momentum. As soon as SAUE White's like, all right, guys, we put a goal into the net. We're having a little bit of confidence. The Evangels say, all right, well, as soon as they get that, send them back home. We're not letting them play for the rest of this one. You can see kind of that lack of confidence from SAUE White. Three players in goal, the first two miss. And that's very uncharacteristic of these players. You can definitely tell that they're maybe struggling to collect themselves. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to collect themselves going into game number three because they are on match point right now for the side of MACU. They are playing phenomenally. And I got to tell you, you want to know what's my favorite thing about collegiate esports? For, well, first of all, it's it's the letters. You got to have fun with the letters. We got SIUE, MACU, just so fun rec recalling all of these acronyms for all of these schools. But mainly, it's because the amount of spirit. There's something going on with collegiate esports. And again, I think coll collegiate athletics in general that has a little bit more of a school pride, school spirit, a little bit more intense rivalry between a lot of these teams. And you love to see it play out on the field. I mean, at this point, the Evangels are also putting a note out to all their viewers, all the people at their school saying, hey, guys, we're not here for all normal studies. We can also come here and compete. We can also show up and kind of put teams down and showcase our prowess and say this is where esports lie. And for the collegiate scene, that's very important here, Captain. you got to make sure that your school, your heads of your school saying this isn't a waste. This is where these teams thrive so the players have confidence and fun. And this is a great way to do it right off the bat. They come off the back of a bye week and face a team that wins their first game not by a large margin it was a 3-2 victory so they did have to fight for it at the very least but i mean it's a great way to start things off especially for a big league like the NECC. Yeah. well speaking of starting things off let's get ready to start off game number three and what possibly could be the last game in this series as macu are already off to a fantastic start trying to find the back of the net but it will be a recovery from siue to send this ball back towards the midfield just kind of a slow, steady start for the Evangels to try and collect themselves before brewing up a major strike towards that net. Really high speed by Quinn to try and maybe put that one back towards center for a chance to try and pop that one back forward. But so far for SUE, they've defended much better position than they did last game. They know this is the fight for their life. They'll manage to get a quick tag, but it's not going far enough. And the Evangels, thankfully for us, will also miss that next hit and get a demo. This is going to be hard to defend. There we go. We're giving the Evangels a taste of their own medicine here. I like the demos. I like the ball plays. But now it's going to be SIUE White to try and execute, even though it didn't lead to a goal. I like the mindset. I like where they're headed. And I know the Evangels like where that ball is headed. It's going right into the back of the net. Quinn being able to get the pass play here. Oh, I'm sorry. Kate, they're able to get the pass play over to Quinn. And already they're able to get the first goal of game number three. 
you got to feel for Nova and Nava, the dynamic duo there for SIUE White. One was trying to use the loop in the gold to try to get back to a spot, and the second they get their wheels back on the ground, a deep shot towards the net, and it's unstoppable from their position. Now, another opportunity given. Okay, there, but it doesn't really net themselves anything. They'll have to meet it as it tries to get sent towards their side of the goal. Castle made it early to try and give Quinn maybe an opportunity to put it back towards center, playing off the corner. It does exactly that, but Kez might have tagged it too soon, and because of the second touch as well, it's not available for another shot opportunity. They may have to take a couple steps back to a goal, but we know their confidence is there. They're going to keep sending shots towards. Yeah, and right now, you know, and again, if I'm capping, say captain's captain, but I feel like SIUE White is not doing the best as far as communications are concerned. Once again, I've seen them double commit one too many times, and that tells me they're not talking it up enough in the chat, in the booth. You know, they're not really communicating with one another. And if you couldn't tell, Infernosis, I'm a very vocal person. You know, I like to talk it up, especially when I'm playing games. You know, I think that bodes well for a lot of these teams that know how to communicate. Even if you're just laying down the quick chat of I got it or go for it, any type of communication at all can really prevent a lot of the double commits that we're seeing coming out of the side of SIUE. A healthy team is a team that communicates. And right now, I mentioned at the beginning of game two, you're mentioning it now, SIUE seemingly having a lack of that makes a really glaringly large hole in their defense more specifically. They've strung a little bit on the attack, but it's so few and far between because of how suffocating the Evangels have been on that assault. Now, finally, SIUE White have started to put early pressure in towards their side of the defense. And fourthly form evangels are all over the place they're definitely communicating when one goes up he falls the second one meets him and because of the aggression by sau white no one's in goal captain and the evangels will send one all the way over from mid absolutely not it must be the season because that goal was completely home alone not a single player from siue in sight but i gotta tell you again a great heads up play coming from macu they saw the opportunity and they took it they were able to shoot the ball from all the way at the midfield on the ground and it was still able to find the back of the net and i gotta tell you it was that aggression that was pulling a lot of the players from siue out of position and out of rotation again the evangels are just putting on an absolute clinic at that midfield line. That's all it comes down to. You're seeing these glaring holes in SCUE wide, and as casters, we have that kind of third omnipotent point of view. The Evangels are seeing it almost just the same as we are. They're understanding at a baseline level that SIUE are struggling in this regard, and they're punishing them for that. That's what you want to see a team doing. They have a higher level of understanding, and because of that, the scoreline has really been reflecting in their favor. Absolutely, but also keep in mind, two goals is not a lot to come back from when you have a minute and 35 on the clock. SIUE White can still make a comeback here and try and equalize against MACU. Now it's going to be all about the execution. We've at least seen a better chance of SIUE to actually put the ball on the side of the Evangel's net. But unfortunately, since that point, they've had to send all three players because of that, which has left major holes in their defense. They try to play a mind game there with Kez. Kez trying to dribble past them, kind of use a trick move to their favor, but not really working. Catherine will send it high. Kez managing to tag it, but Nava, thankfully, there will also rub it away. And now it's up to the long play of Micah. Centers it sums up for mid. Can't get it close enough. Not enough. Oof, and Kez will clear it just barely, but it's going back towards the net. It goes in. Micah allowing a bit of a pinch and it will allow for them to get a goal. Absolutely, and this was a pretty tasty oh. shot to say the least. That one goes off the wall and manages to go all the way into the back of the net. I don't think I could have pulled that one off if I tried 100 times. That was a decent shot, and again, just to be able to bank it off the wall like that and get it into the back of the net, I got to tell you, that was a clutch shot in a very clutch situation. As now with just, with just over 40 seconds left to go, SIUE White are now within one goal of equalizing. That gap closes ever closer. We noted how close game one was. It was a 3-2 scoreline. Now SIUE White is the team that has to make that comeback. Ball's on their side of the court, though. They must send this one back over to the Evangels' side. Get that pressure. 30 seconds on the clock. Ticking away in favor of the Evangels. It's like a fourth man on that field. Father time not working for SIUE White. And it's back on their side. They've got to clear this fast and get a shot towards goal. Yeah, that they do, but look oh. at the rebuttal coming from Quinn there in the midfield. Literally being able to take the initial shot here off of the pass from Cather, and then 
going off the sidebar is able to collect it and put it on target that again was a great heads up play coming from quinn and again just another pass play to find the back of the net for the evangels the job's not done the first time you hit it follow through quinn just epitomizes that exactly and is able to clean up their own dirty work 10 seconds on the clock saw white two goals down they send one deep and almost goes to the top left of the net but Two players, one for each side, will tag it away, and it looks like the Avengers are going to manage to secure themselves a high position. It almost goes in the net as well, but that is a victory for them. Great game to close things out here for week one. They look dominant. Oh, that they do. And I got to tell you, they were able to come in and, um, you know, really make a statement. They Not only did they win, but they won in a dominant fashion. They were able to take a 3-0 sweep against a team that won in week number one. So they had a taste of victory already. Now, MACU comes in, and now they got their own taste of victory. And I think they're going to be carrying that on throughout of the NECC season. And I would not be surprised if we see more of the likes of the MACU in conversations, especially when it comes to playoff time. Still early. But this is a team I think we're going to have to keep a, an eye out for here in the early in the early season. Making predictions here, Captain. We'll have to see if not, it's not happen anything or not. bold. I'm just, yeah, just nothing too big, nothing too big. <laughs> I'm excited for it as well, though. They looked great. Unfortunately, it's kind of rough to do your first game on broadcast here because not only does that put pressure on you early, some teams rise above that and actually use that as a little bit of an oomph and boost to them. But that's pressure now for the rest of the season, as that is a lot of your strategies, the way you play, your play styles, how you position yourselves. All of that's on the on the bookings already in front of everybody. A quick VOD review by other teams breaking down every play and you may be hard pressed to try to use the same strategy back to back absolutely well speaking of back to back we're gonna have back to back matches for you because we're gonna have to take a short break but don't worry when we come back we will be right back to some more rocket league right here at the necc so do not go anywhere we will be right back once again with some more rocket league
Hello and welcome Rocket League fans. We are here. We are live. Little NECC action coming at you. I'm FBI Tugboat. I'm here with my man Sizz Cass for the first time I believe with you and I. Is that correct? Yes sir, that would. Very excited for it. Very excited for it. Sizz, and, how, are uh, we, how are we feeling tonight? I'm feeling great man. I uh, watched the games earlier. They were going great. Some fantastic series and uh, we should have two more on the night that's going to be just as good if not even better because this is the champions division. Consider the best of the best around here. So I mean, he's got, these are some good players here. We got here to talk about the cream of the crop. They rise to the top. Bethany Blue, Bethany Blue. Let's check him out first. Now Bethany, of course, has sent multiple teams. Bethany Blue, who we're looking at here today. Would you care to introduce them? I will do NAU Gold. Oh my goodness! Look at these players. First, we got Gusky over there on the side. I recognize him. He's a very, very solid player. Sky right below him, and Zenith as well. All of these I have seen play. All of them have been around that SSL rank. Uh, there's some pretty good Rocket League players. I've seen all of them, and something that's really interesting. The fun fact that uh, Zenith put in. He said he played for the Wichita Wolves, and he loves his grandmother. Good job, Zenith. Two very important things. Two very important things. Check it out. In a U Gold incoming here in a trio players. That is C8DN, the creative media and film sophomore. Castio and KJ KJ's. KJ's management. Biomedication senior. So three players. Kind of all across the uh, all across year wise, right? A little freshman action, a little sophomore action, a little senior action, all across the all across the gamut there. So was yeah, you've got the good experience coming in, and you've got that freshman capability for this team. So you've got leadership, and you've got raw talent. So it's always a good combination. Something that's always interesting to see, especially when these players first come together, is how they're able to mesh in that first team, freshman, freshman, senior. Then we got a sophomore, senior, and freshman. So both teams are pretty even, it feels like. And they're also pretty even on their record. Unfortunately, they both started out 0-1. and But, I mean, they both lost to some good teams. Uh, Bethany College started out with a 1-3 loss versus Columbia College. Very solid team, and uh, NAU Gold lost to UT Dallas zero to three. But I mean, th those are rough matches to have to start your season off with. Yeah, entirely fair. Entirely fair. The guarantee here, the guarantee here today says, is that one of these two teams will be picking up their first W. Can't tie within the great game of Rocket League. In case you're just unfamiliar with it, we're going to be looking at five minute games right here they might go into overtime honestly we kind of want that says don't we a little bit of extra overtime action we were granted that not once but twice last week those two game fives both matches that had overtime games within them for the first match it really went down to the wire let's hope that bethany blue and in a u gold will be granting us the same dramatic rocket league that we got in week number one of the necc loads of other esports going on as well well there's valorant there's a lot of, uh, lot of, uh, what else is there? What else is there? There's plenty of other esports to be talked about, but it is Rocket League here today in AU Gold. In the right, the yellow, definitely blue, and the left, in the blue. We're on the new map, too. Just for anyone that isn't aware, this map just got added this season of Rocket League Season 8. It's a very beautiful map, aesthetically pe pleasing to the eyes. It has a nice competitive atmosphere. So, uh, first game on, both teams. I was going to have to be in this warm-up period, but it's so hard to in the early season when you go down a lost tugboat and you have to try to battle out. Going down 0-2 to start a season is never something these players want to have to deal with. So the pressure definitely going to be a uh, key factor, I feel like, in this series. Yes, 100% agree. Nobody wants to go on a 0-2. KJ, shot across the middle, shot across the bow, letting Sky know that they are there. The skies do fall. That's another corner shot. KJ on the other side doing his best. Sky impression. Two plays. Pretty identical. Two different teams, different sides, though. Packed crowds, as we see over here right side. Packed crowds, as we hit about four minutes left in this competition. A slow play, too, from both teams. I think they're just kind of poking out, trying to see what they can get. I haven't seen a lot of overcommits, just a lot of safe touches back and forth to each other. This infield pass is a good setup. Zenith looking for the double. That's going to be easily blocked by KJ, but still, just poking and prodding early in this game, looking for overcommits. It's a great demo in the backfield. That's something, too, which team's going to start implementing that physical play. It's 2022 Rocket League. You're going to see a lot of demos. <laughs> 2022 Rocket League, yes, the very short respawn timers will come in, especially in this champs division. Come forth, have a serious, serious effect. Looking at a little bit of middle. 
shot across the middle. Still gonna have to pick it up as this orange team, that NAU gold squad, still keeping the flame alive. See that's too. Very mechanical. A player that loves to go for those air plays. So uh, I'm really keeping an eye on him. Let's try to set up this offense a lot. A quick volley, no one home, a nice save from Sky. The first real dangerous shot we've seen so far almost ended up in a goal. Still yeah. poking and prodding. Look at Zenith go with the work, but look at the defense again. NAU gold, solid on that goal line. Take away across the middle. Shot down bottom, tries to bounce it against this ground. Not gonna get past not one but two defenders right there. As we hit about halftime here, sis. And we are looking at Nada. Zilch, Nada, zero. We're talking about scores on boards. Not without attempts, though. Not without attempts. Offense going the other way. Good setup here. Nice read again. Not afraid to die of his third man in AU Gold. They've got a lot of confidence on that defensive side, but I want to see some more work in the offense. A nice shot towards the net. Maybe not too nice. You know, it's just going to easily take this to the wall. But again, they're not wanting to really give him any time in the air. Just shutting down those wall plays as soon as it happened. This is nice control. A nice challenge again. Zeta thought the backward a double commit. Probably the first one we've seen so far in this series. But still, it is held scoreless. Both teams getting some jabs, but holding strong. Nothing drawing blood, even though the blows have been exchanged. 110 seconds left in this one. KJ just like slowly trying to keep this ball within this offensive prowess. Back to the middle. Zenith looked to take a lot off the top, and KJ and company actually managing to keep this one in play. Galaxy up. That's just a little bit too high. Zenith flicks this one way to the outside, and we go back to the other side for what, never on. It looked like we were going back to the outside. Now the middle is Galaxy, the rest of NAU Gold doing everything in a bag of chips to keep this one, this offensive drive alive. Zenith gets this one taken across and back to the middle and play we go, says. Yeah, it's starting to see a little bit of pressure build up there from NAU Gold. A lot of shots, we saw Bethany Blue on a lot of fumes or zero boost, but now they've got a chance on their own. As the time is winding down, Sky looking to take control in his own hands, gets a pass one. Can't get it past the other. Infield pass, no one there. It's intercepted again by KJ. We see this midfield constantly being pressured by NAU. They don't want to give up that time. This is a good chance. A quick shot, top Ooh. bar, and Castillo going to put both teams finally on the scoreboard with 49 seconds left. You generally look at a Rocket League game, high level or not, looking at a total score over and under, maybe you know, three and a half, four and a half, maybe. And we're looking at one, Uno. It's my favorite games of Rock League, I'm not gonna lie to you. Zero one games outside of ha over time that are just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's exactly what we've gotten here today. NAU Gold has the lead and they know it. Bethany Blue gonna have to come out here and get aggressive with this in the next 35 seconds or so to tie this one up, push it on into overtime. If we do get there, I'm not sure how long oh. that one will last. Up and down, but no, KJ again. KJ the keeper, love to see it. Solid defense. Oh, a flick pass too. Sky trying to put in work. Castillo, good for that one goal. Good for a save as well. And nice read to just milk the time off of this clock. 15 seconds now. Bethany Blue trying to get one last ditch effort. A nice read again from KJ on the back line. Impenetrable defense. Time ticking down. Castillo taking so much time on this one. Zena pass one, but KJ's right there again. Low bouncer. Time running out, Sky. Last ditch effort, no boost. What can he do? Has to leave it for Zenith. Launches it down the field. Redirect is going to be way too far off. And NAU wow. gold. My goodness. The hey. defense. De what? Defense, defense, defense. I love it. Both teams. It's not like either of them were unwilling to commit on offense by any means. Uh, I think you pointed out there's only one real, real, like, clear defensive mistake even in au gold's one goal was just earned all the way through it's a very very competitive game and i'm very much looking forward to a game number two yeah this is kind of what i expected at this level of rock league just that first game is always going to be very back and forth it's just basic fundamental rock league because these teams these teams are so good that that first mistake that they make it's going to cost them we saw it there it's a beautiful shot but still just the tiniest mistakes is going to punish you but again it's a best of five Plenty of time for both teams. It's very even. If it stays like that, it's going to be a pretty entertaining series. Yeah. Predictions-wise, I got nothing outside of more incredibly competitive Rocket League. Bethany Blue, I could completely see them coming forth and doing like a mirror flip of what just happened right here. Like the same exact thing, but the other way around. Just a minor, minor mistake taken advantage of by these really high-level and really skillful players to go forth, put one up on the board, and then just hold out 
the other squad, game two, flip side, that'd be NAU gold, uh, just out of everything, right? And then just kind of like stem the bleeding, get on down to a game number three in a tied up type situation. Got to get there first, though, Sis. Got to get there first. And the, the great thing about this type of gameplay is it's such a chess game that you wonder when that first difference of gameplay is going to come in. When are they going to start going for more infield passes? When are they going to start adjusting to more defense, more offense? We saw a lot of midfield challenges, especially by NAU. They were just constantly hounding them. So you have to wonder, maybe coming into this game, Bethany's going to say, all right, let's make an adjustment. Let's try to just bait them in a little bit more. But it looked like they were trying to do that. It just wasn't very successful because their defense, while they were strong at times, they uh, were on it for a little too much time, it seemed. Yeah. Again, uh, you know, great game of Rocket League, the information, the stats, and whatnot that they give us afterwards is beautiful, but I would love a time of possession counter, right? <laughs> Just uh, so, so something slowly ticking up seconds to kind of give you people, you know, a, a good solid indicator of who really is controlling the pace of this game. Yes, defense wins games and championships, whatever, as the, as the, as the phrase goes, but in the end of the day, time of possession is definitely something that one could use to really determine who is able to control this ball and go forth and score, because you got really got to have good ball control, especially at these higher levels. You're not just going to get wonky balls hoisted in from half court that actually oh. make it. Oh my god, you're going to get random balls hoisted in from half court that are going to make it all the way in. Oh, the Caster one that curse. got his team on the board again. Yeah, definite caster curse. This is a beautiful one of you one play. I mean, the, the classic one touch yourself in the air into a bump. You couldn't really ask for anything better than that. Castio again, putting his team on his back. But this time, it was in the first nine seconds of the game. Yeah, what, nine seconds into this one, we have as many scores in game number two. Then we had in five minutes of game number one. Back on over to it. Okay, I was gonna say, are we just gonna see a shootout, a slopper fest? Just going down right here and everybody putting up big numbers? Not what I would have anticipated. And the only mistake thus far seems like it has been taken advantage of. That can happen off the kickoff as well. You know, a little demo action in the middle. It's a good chance, but again, great defense from Sky reading that play. Castillo trying to intercept this one down to KJ. Is able to beat out one, looking for a bump attempt. Great pass, Zenith up early, but maybe too early. Couldn't quite get the contact. This is a very dangerous touch from Castillo. Not sure the idea behind that one, and you're always going to get punished for that. Nice put from Gusky to finish that one off, but kinda, question mark? Yeah, that has to just come off the back. Galaxy to Gusky. That pretty much just had to come off the back of the miscommunication right there. I, I, I am... Uh, I am not 100, or Cassio and Galaxy, excuse me. I am not 100% sure right there. Uh, especially, like, putting yourself parallel to ball. Yeah, that just has to have been a miscommunication. Like, a uh, player who is aerial said, like, no, I don't got it, and then player who's on bottom just does, like, what they can at that <laughs> point. I'm not 100% sure. I don't want to theory craft too hard here. Regardless, Bethany Blue. Bethany Blue, yes. Regardless, there's a breakdown, and Bethany Blue have put up their first goal in. Mm -hmm. Uh, what seven minutes seven and a half minutes of con six and a half minutes excuse me of competition no goals game number one it was a very low scoring game indeed though castillo hit over to the outside oh. kj up and kj down that's in a you gold second in game numero dos just beautiful here execution infield kj top left shot had to hit it exactly where he did or was going to get saved by gusky and well he delivered beautiful shot beautiful pass and just as all of that effort from all of that time for Bethany Blue to get a goal. Now they got to get another one. Yeah, just uh, just after they purchased themselves, tied up type situation in AU Gold with the infield passing. Gets up another one. You got to feel vindicated a little bit, Sims, right? 100%. Oh, wait, maybe oh, not. There you go. <laughs> and there's another one. What was, the, what was the verbiage that I used? We are not going to see random balls foisted <laughs> in from half court. Cassie Curse number two. Well, I, 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 no, I think just it's recurring. It's recurring. Recurring. Okay, so recurring, yes, defense yes. has really been uh, not necessarily left by the wayside in game number two, but more so these teams are just much more willing to be hyper aggressive, right? Like overextend even. I mean, if this is a blocked ball away, you're looking at three players with next to no boost on the opposite sides of these fields that would not have been, been able to make a play on the other side of the, the other side of the pitch, right? But it goes in. That's all that matters. I think both teams have gotten comfortable. The the sticks are feeling warm, and they're like, all right, we're, we're going to go all in regardless of the consequences. And both teams have been punished, and it's paid off another chance. 
Nice save on the rotation, but both teams have definitely had that breakdown of rotation. And speaking of a breakdown, a classic breakdown of defense. Two players went right for the ball, and it got shot right in between the two of them. Wow, oh, yeah. Down to the middle right there. Gaskew is trying to get it to a different teammate. I believe that was Sky. Not 100% sure. Regardless, NAU Gold going to be able to get that one in. Five scores in the first half. Two. This is where you start to wonder if this is going to be another freebie gifted to Bethany or the rotation is going to clean up a little bit. Zenith infield pass is saved on the goal line by Galaxy. What a lunging effort to keep that out. KJ on the counter fakes out one. Looking for the infield. A nice pass. The shot. Not able to get contact. Both teams dangerously close to another goal on the board. Yeah, and how interesting. Sky over there for Bethany Blue. Kind of splits, like, you know, again, their focus is hyper aggression. Sky sitting across the middle. This was a wide open net after all three defenders had to take a bite at getting this one out from sources of danger. Uh, there, there's a lot to be said for playing defense and awareness. There's a lot to be said for being exactly where you need to be at the right time. 100 seconds left in game number two. Up, oh, KJ my. gets the, what, their second on the game. I think they have assist as well, so really. AJ is doing everything, 127 kilometers per hour. People, that's something like 85 or 90 miles an hour. Uh, that, if there's a reason to use a flat car in Rocket League, it's for the shot placement, because that was just gorgeous. <laughs> Both shots from KJ have been extraordinary. Now it puts NAU Gold up 4-2, just under 90 seconds left. Another shot from KJ, that one just didn't quite have the pepper behind it this time around. But again, they don't need another goal. Another goal probably would be the nail in the coffin, but they're trying to waste as much time. And look at the read from Galaxy, just pre-jumped in the air, floating. It's that type of confidence you want as a player, but it's the type of confidence we're still looking to see from Bethany. Yeah, I mean, they played this game entirely at a tied-up type situation, Sis, or actually from behind. Only scores they've gotten has been in game number two, and both of those were just the tied-up. They were not the go-ahead goals by any means. As it is, 60 seconds left. Bethany Blue has proved they can get one in quick and fast. As long as they keep it aloft after that, even if it hits 0-0, they can still get another one to tie this one. So this is a game two that isn't quite done. There's just massive advantage right now in AU goal. Yeah, because as good as the defense we've seen from them, even with a few lapses in the rotations, you have to think they're going to lock down here and Galaxy content to waste so much time. The pre-jump from Zia says, no, can't waste that much time. KJ off the corner, infield, not the greatest. Sky launches it towards the net. Too high, Cassio had the save regardless. Last chance effort here for Gusky off the ceiling, looking for the bump attempt. Sky doesn't trust it. Zia is going to dive, a great touch. They have to get a goal here, rolling down, waterfall, and there might just be a chance. Wow, call it a waterfall, call it a guillotine, regardless. Someone's coming off the top right there for NAU Gold. Bethany Blue, 13 seconds left, and we'd have it no other way. Score difference in one in game one, incredibly close one it was. And we get the same type difference in the last few seconds of this game. NAU Gold on the defense, a hit up. Galaxy, that may have been enough. No, it's not. Gasky's going to be able to take some from the top. KJ, oh man, Heartbreak Hotel has been checked into. For Bethany Blue, Bethany Blue, man, that last that last player right there, right? <clears throat> th this is theory crafting 100%, so just just bear with me, people. If he comes in just a little bit slower, in fact, if he maybe even had like what eight less boost or something like this, then that would have been able he would have been able to just like continue this trajectory a little bit more and actually hit to this top right corner because KJ on the other side for for um for NAU Gold was was flat, right, and so hard with no momentum whatsoever, just get up like top and try and do, try and have some kind of play there. How interesting, how interesting. Incredibly close game yet again, but hey, high quality Rocket League competition is what can be expected at the NECC. Uh, you gotta feel for him. I feel like he was trying so hard just to beat out that last opponent to keep the ball in the air and realize, wait a second, I hit this a little <laughs> too hard, but nonetheless, game's over. Rocket League is a very fast eSport, so you gotta move on, you can't Keep licking your wounds, gotta try to regain here as they are put on match point here with NAU Gold trying to take hold of this series. Bethany Blue just trying to keep their hopes alive. Maybe getting a lead for the first time would be a good start. Yeah, definitely. Again, Bethany Blue has played this competition entirely from behind. NAU Gold gives that one up. We'll be looking at a unique situation that we have not seen yet between these two powerhouses of Rocket League. 30 seconds left into this one. 
a little one-on-one -on -one action, but that's going to get foisted over to the left side. I'm going to stop using that word based on what it's given me so far today. That almost looked like Castillo was going to once again hear the foist word and, and get another goal in. <laughs> Gratis here. A little bit of back and forth. Zenith infield. Sky to the backboard. It's just a little bit off, and he gets the read. Galaxy wasn't quite able to get that one. Sky, beautiful play to himself, and, well, maybe a caster blessing this time around. They listen to what I said. They start out with the lead. <laughs> there, especially if you're Bethany, right? All right, calm down. Ahead by one, play exactly how you had before, Bethany Flew. <laughs> this is not a uh, this is not a get a big head type situation. Definitely hard to get scores in an AU gold. Even harder to get one before they put one up. But now that's a double, de double uh, defender on the other side, and Castio and company get back just in the nick of time. Zenith up. Zenith can't quite get the hit that he wants on there. Not sure if that was a lack of boost type situation, sis. Yeah, it's a little bit of a question mark, but gonna have to move on. Gusky in a field. Sky had a great chance. Just rushed himself a little bit, it seemed. Zenith off the backboard. Can't quite get his go. Sky left in 2v1. Galaxy back down the <gasps> bump. It's him. And oh, it's just so picture perfect. What do you do if you're the defender there? Left all alone with the defender chasing you, and you get bumped. Brutal. Gasky gets his ID checked at the door and says, Sorry, son, in a couple years, maybe that's going to be KJ getting up that one. The fantastic, just uh, what is it, like the bouncer type movement. Just doesn't have to. Wait. Okay, yeah, there you go. You said the same thing as me. Very, very surprising would have been for another kickoff goal like that. Cool, a good chance, Sky. Just a little bit off on that read, but you gotta wonder if he starts to get more comfortable on those, if that's gonna be a goal. Sky the back pass, trying to keep possession. Gusky off the sidewall, and great clear. All the way down the other side of the field, Galaxy's just gonna boom it back. Zenith is also gonna boom it back. AJ up early, off the sidewall. Not the greatest touch, Sky's there, not a stripper of a shot from the midfield. Sky says, thank you for that dime. Yeah, a dime it was indeed. Zenith. Over to this outside area. Okay, yeah, but I was gonna say, we just gotta get this in this uh, point of view of kind of a front row seat to that one. Bethany Blue, what? Uh, we have seen one total score across it. Cool. You were saying? <laughs> I, I don't know, that one kind of broke my brain right here. Castillo tries for like a top hood type hit in, and that's uh, free as air, free as a Costco sample, free as rain coming down from the sky for Bethany Blue. The largest score difference for Bethany Blue that we have seen today as well. Two, two up action. A total score is a four, still 30 seconds away from halftime. It's not something you see very often in 3v3 as a kickoff goal. You'll see no, good no. chances and good plays leading from the kickoff, but really not just straight away into the net. Something more along the line, lines of 1v1. So NAU Gold getting a little bit of a mental breakdown here, it seems. They're down two, but they're still Plenty of time left in this game, and we know how capable they are in the offense. I think Bethany Blue, meanwhile, is just trying to ride the roller coaster out. A nice flick, and a great save from Sky. Nice flick, great save. Combination on the teams all day long, and not once but twice. You're just a little bit too high in AU Gold Heartbreak Hotel. Back on over to it, but I guess this is really just an attest of endurance. We got reverse sweeps on broadcast last week. That was for me, and that was for B Stream. We're up here, primary stream, A Stream right now. And the way Bethany Blue is playing, this looks like the first step to that ever-elusive reverse sweep. Out and in. That's not too high. Gasky. Three scores now when we're talking about leads over NAU Gold. And that is not a feat that has been accomplished by this Gold Squad yet either. They have won both of their games by a score difference of one. The offense really, really starting to click for this team. And uh, NAU Gold... It's just looking a little bit flat-footed on the defense, and like you said, it's a game of endurance, and right now, Bethany Blue, definitely, they might not have won the uh, initial speed contest right away, but they're starting to win the marathon. Time running out for this NAU Gold team, a nice dunk, Zenith, great defense, and again, another block. Confidence starting to ramp up. Zenith, left side, tries to set this one up across the middle, gets denied by defender. Back on over to it. Galaxy, their time to shine. Gets this one hit up and sets up for KJ to try and get a big hit across the middle and flip this offensive look. Galaxy tries to get a look on this, maybe even more of just like a little bit of a fake to try and allow teammate to get something across the middle. We're talking ceilings, we're talking walls. Zenith is coming across the middle now. 
up and down. We'll see what he can do with it. Now, nah, yeah, Cassio just meets him there and denies anything across that. Bethany Blue looks like they realize the situation they are in, and that is a 62-second timer until they are crowned victors of game number three. All they're really doing is facing against the uh, against the clock right now. A shot at Tim. It's going to be easily blocked and. Never want to call a game very early in Rocket League of all games, but it's not looking the greatest here for an AU gold. We only got one goal, and it really wasn't too anything crazy. It's a good bump play, but that's about as much offense as we've seen from them so far. Alex, he a block. Seen it then. Yes, you trying to both go for this. I guess it doesn't really matter when you have a three goal lead, but you still don't want to make a bunch of careless mistakes because they can carry over into your next game. A redirect is going to be blocked, and I think that. Might just have wasted enough time now to just about mathematically impossible for an AU goal to come back and win this one. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at like, what, three goals technically would be like six seconds or something crazy short like that. Well, that's uh, that's a lot more doable. 11 seconds, basically gonna have to take it off a of kickoff though. If Bethany Blue wins kickoff and they just take it over and they just literally, you know, waste four or five seconds or something like that, then we will truly, truly be away from a situation in which an AU goal can come back. Let's, let's see it. It's a good look. I mean, it goes right back down to Gusky. That's so easy in 3v3 just to lose the kickoff to your teammate. And that's pretty much got to seal the deal. Neutral 50, no time left on the clock. Bethany Blue keeping their series hopes alive. And in AU gold, they got a little bit of a bloody nose, it seems. That they do. That they do. This boxing match is not going to go bloodless between either of these teams, both dropping a game and both taking a game. Bethany Blue, I, I gotta say, the only, the, the big difference here, right, is we almost got a 4-1 scoreline. Bethany Blue purchased a three-score difference right here, and that's the largest we've seen across these two teams. Let's go for predictions, or just give me your, uh, give me your outlook on this, your expectations or whatnot here, Sizz. Uh, Bethany Blue, they come back and push this uh, to a game five, a tied up, and game four is this gonna be NAU gold back to their usual ways. I mean, it kind of feels like the, the, better team from the start just kind of had a little bit of a setback and a lot of times you'll see a best of five and they'll they'll lose one game after getting a couple and then they'll come right back and, and have control of the series so i kind of have to think that while they got hurt while their nose is still getting cleaned up they're feeling better and they say all right we got to regain let's go back to the way we were playing we were dominating the midfield but hey anything can happen to strike at least see what happens early possession and that they blew says we did it in nine seconds last game we'll do it in six Okay. Yeah. Wow. Crazy stuff. Uh, I think that uh, what the, your your point about uh, the better team suffering setbacks. I really have to. I really have to agree. I swear I was going to say this before Bethany Blue actually scored first. <laughs> but basically, it seemed like <laughs> yeah, Bethany Blue was just more kind of focused on playing that defense. And, and, and I mean, if NAU goal didn't get that one, if it just like had gotten blocked away in game one, I, I swear it says I think we'd still be watching that game number one. Like it'd still be going on. You know. Uh, oh yeah. And, and just like maybe a little bit of warm-up action as well. I hate speculating on like how warm or cold players are coming into competitions. This is the middle of the day, you can pretty much guarantee. And that's a low, slow, fast roller, excuse me, from KJ. KJ seems to be able to spin gold out of straw. I don't remember which uh, which fairy tale that is, though. It's definitely Rumble famous Siltskin? one. That's Rumble Rumble Siltskin, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Spinning fair. like the lady with the hair. <laughs> Am I mixing up... Mixing up uh, it's up something like that. We'll go along those lines. Okay. Regardless, he definitely hey, did lady, it the right the, way. That one with the hair. The one with the right, hair. Right, right. Yeah, that's pretty much go. every Disney movie that's ever come <laughs> hey, out. But yes. Yeah, exactly. Four minutes, 20 seconds left in this one. Back and forth we go. Where we stop, nobody knows. Is... That's a great air dribble attempt from Gusky, but I've seen a lot of overcuts from Bethany Blue. They got him scored last time. It's still good to see the confidence they have. You just got to be careful on sitting the house. It is a good strat, and that was another okay. waterfall. A great read, but still, I mean, and they use gold defense. They, they have not looked the same from those first two games. Maybe they have. Wow. Nice save. Yeah. My oh my, the defensive prowess really showing its head. There for NAU Gold slipping into offense, and no other teammates there. Once again, NAU Gold was in the best position uh, for like a formative shot, right? I'm not talking about KJ taking away and, and uh, rolling this one across the middle. That was like the best opportunity that AU Gold had probably been able to purchase themselves, at least solo dolo wise, at least one player up and like super, super committed in the offense. And then two teammates just kind of hanging out around midfield. I understand that it's tied and you don't want to give up that advantage, but you also got to take it eventually if you want to win this game. 
Well, most definitely. That was a great look, a great setup from Cassio. Just unfortunately flipped the wrong direction. Galaxy, back down to Cassio again. Can't get the redirect. KJ taking control in that flat car. Likes for the infield, a beautiful pass, a shot. Just a little bit wide. Another 50 racing towards the net. Bar down, a good demo. KJ lining up the shot a little bit off. Where's the follow? Galaxy says, I'm right there. Wait, Castillo yeah. actually takes the goal. One of them had it for sure. Either way, this is a goal. Well, okay, so obviously nobody's going to complain about getting a goal, right? But is this indicative of NAU Gold's like, kind of miscoordinations? Like, either player, wide open net, obviously a mistake by Bethany Blue. But the double commit on offense, they could have easily just ran into each other and then given up possession. That's, that's a little bit scary, but when a team does have that much confidence, it can't go right back the other direction to be scary for Bethany. And now they're starting to have to play defense. They've given up two goals. CI, counter, 1v1, no boost, a beautiful flick, a nice save on the back line. Both teams really starting to up the pace on these counter attacks. Approaching halftime now, this one dangerous again, this guy's going to take control. Another infill, but Zenith is right there for the read. Back on over to the right side. Bethany Blue fighting from behind is not a situation they found themselves in in seven or eight minutes of Rocket League. Let's see how they deal with it. Of course, game one and two, those both one score differences thus far, and that's what we're at right now. 213 left, KJ. Kind of rounding round for it. Zenithson's flying way over everybody's head, and everybody forces to answer it. A miss across the middle, but a heroic defensive save there from Zenith. Sure thought that was going to be a goal, but again, an AU gold. I didn't have the most confidence in their defense, but I, they made me shut up this game because they have completely regained a lot of clutch saves from this team. Still, the game's not over yet. Zenith taking control. Infield, Galaxy down to KJ. KJ, the nail in the coffin, just slightly off again. But like I've said that several times to this NAU offensive team, I feel like it should be 4-1 to right now with as many <laughs> wide right shots as they've shot. But still, nonetheless, winning old game, approaching 90 seconds. Bouncer across the middle. That's going to be enough for Castillo to get... Another one, another one in here. Two score difference. Uh, we have not seen that come back from yet. That was Bethany Blue advantage earlier in a U gold that uh, did lose one, but managed to still take the game overall. 90 seconds left. Your classic 90 second drill, right? Just enough time to do both. You know, to have formative plays, really set these up, and even give up some offensive time, but not enough to really have some comfortable wiggle room. Triple commit from <laughs> both squads almost on that ball. The steal, it does get hit out to the midfield temporarily. Looking for the bumps in the backfield. Castillo, a great recovery. Zenith, infield pass. Guskey's over there, but it's just not enough heat on that. This guy taking control. Not a lot of boost. Really can't do too much with this. Lobby to the backward. Guskey, one touch to himself. To the side wall, looking for the double. A great redirect. Zenith, or Sky rather, excuse me, waiting down there. Isn't able to get the touch. And again, so much time just keeps getting wasted. A lot of these plays from Bethany are just taking way too long to set up. Run over to the middle. Sky down bottom. Hit over to the right side. That's not going to be enough for Bethany Blue to take this one out until a nice play across the middle. Galaxy mixing up the Sky right there. Forced defense from Bethany Blue and 30 seconds left. NAU Gold trying to maintain the offensive look. KJ, right side, tried to be picked up by Castillo. He gets away with it. Zenith comes up and just a little bit too high and too fast. On over. This might be the last couple of opportunities here for Bethany Blue. Definitely going to be if they don't get a goal right here. Zenith, take away. Husky, down the bottom. Nah, not going to happen. Sky hits it way off to the right, and AU goal wins by at least one. Mere formality if it goes in. It does not. And NAU gold... Come back strong as ever, and uh, it, it looked like they broke a sweat, to be honest. As soon as they got that, that two-goal lead, or that one-goal lead, rather, and they jumped up to the two-goal lead, it, it was just smooth selling from there. A great yep. showing, a great effort from Bethany Blue, just not quite there tonight. A 3-1 victory there for your NAU Gold Squad. Uh, fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. They, this was... I, I really think the big difference here is that NAU Gold just knew how to apply offensive pressure. Not that Bethany Blue is playing board defense whatsoever, but between demos, between passes, and everything else, especially in the infield like you were talking about earlier, this is exactly what NAU Gold needed to, to secure this victory, and they just it was really just kind of like a, 
procedural, right? Almost like mathematical at that point. Yes, they gave up a game number three, but that's also when Bethany Blue was hands down at their most aggressive. Once they kind of split the difference between that and kind of didn't give up more open net situations, again, KJ was straight up eating today. Straight up eating. Whenever there was an opportunity, especially if it was half, like, like half pitch, or whatever across the middle of this uh middle of the court right here and if kj had boost and that was like half the time going to go in for just an open net rolling ball from the middle from kj good teams make good plays great teams make adjustments and i Yo. think both teams tonight are great teams but at the end of the day a win is a win the first win of the season there for nau yes. gold they're rocking one on one unfortunately bethany does fall to zero and two but hey i mean we're just in the start. All the esports are trying to kick back up. Then ECC here came back up. They got plenty of time to find their footing again. Oh, yes. November 11th, I believe, is the last regular season game of Rocket League within the ECC before a litany of playoff-type opportunities for these teams to go forth, really prove themselves in the postseason. Also, uh, you know, I was considering this. I'm going to go ahead and show my age a little bit here. How interesting. Zenith, not Casio, but Casio and Galaxy are all different types of very old TVs. The big fat ones, the big thick fat ones, the ones they have to play Super Smash Brothers Melee on now. So, fun fact for the day, right little there. Little blast huh? from the past. Little blast <laughs> from the past. We got our next game coming up here in uh, what about 20 minutes or so? 20, 22, 23 minutes or so. We'll get that up here as far as schedule, and we can kind of see you guys what or tell you guys as far as what to expect. Until then, we'll be back in just a little bit that is u b c o yellow taking on e a u c d blue a lot of letters there a lot of letters there, there says a lot of letters you want to go anywhere maybe cook some popcorn uh, it's gonna be a good one so we'll see you here in about 20 minutes
Hello and welcome back. A short break it would be indeed. We keep our promises here at the NECC. Unintentional rhyming there. Sizz and FBI Tugboat here with you guys taking you in through match number two. And the last of these Rocket League matches here today. First and foremost, I want to thank some of the folks behind the scenes right here. Sizz and I are just casters. Without our production staff and not the support that they provide, we are just two guys screaming about video games in our rooms. We really appreciate them. Making our jobs as casters just so much easier. Just so much easier. UBCO, University of British Columbia, coming up here on first. Would you care to introduce them, good sir? Oh, of course, and it would be my pleasure to introduce some fantastic names here. Uh, we got Fisher first. I'm going to have to pass on the second part. To, to Patrick? <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, so, somewhere around there. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to have to ask. Uh, Safeway Police, Chrissy, and uh, Jay, you could say, is not playing this game. I, I wanted to mention his name because that's, that's just a great name. Who's that? Well, it's Jay, you could say. Jay, Jay you, could, you say. could say, right? <laughs> Jay, you could say the sub. Uh, that is a psychology junior. Might see them in games two, three, maybe four if we go the distance, or game five if we go the distance. We will certainly or surely not be seeing them within game one. Yes, it'll be Fisher, Safeway, Chrissy. Taking a look at the your excuse me, EAUCD Blue Squad. Still in the Challengers Division, of course. That's Salamence, Computer Science Junior. That is Grunt. And that is Tom. Grunt and Tom. Now, many, many subs right here. We might see Moves 15, might see Dish, might see Carrot Killer. Carrot Killer coming on in. Freshman, undeclared major. But they are playing that keyboard and mouse. Keyboard and mouse. Now let's talk a little bit about the past here to maybe predict the future. Same kind of situation here, Sizz, between Bethany Blue and NAU Gold. Oh, we're getting to get started already. Excuse me. Excuse me. They did tell me it was happening. Both of these teams coming off of losses last week, and both of these teams coming off of 3-1 losses as well, so there weren't total sweeps here, Sizz. Yeah, a little bit of a deja vu going on. A little bit of a different division this time around. This is Challengers over on that Pacific side. But still, both teams looking for that first win. If it goes anything like the last series, well, we're going to be in for an interesting one already. Some uh, early offense here on the blue side of the field. Tom looking to really get some passes going. is a great attempt and it forces a double commit. Salamence just popping it up high, looking to bait out the touches. And honestly, it's just been a lot of offense so far and a lot of defense from uh, UBCO. Yeah, not surprised. Not surprised. We're coming hot off the heels of a very close game. And that first match right there and is the well, EAUCD will hence be referred to as University of California in Davis, or just Davis. It'll be much easier for everybody involved here, guys. That's the blue squad on the left, British Columbia squad right in the yellow. Making this, of course, an international competition, right? Canada on the right in the yellow, the United States of America team on the left in the blue. Careful, don't get biased here. Wait, we are trying to do the oh, country no bias, like no, no bias here. <laughs> but we do see that Canada flag rocked here by Safeway Police. So he maybe is repping the uh, country warfare here, trying to make either country <laughs> proud here. But still, a lot of just kind of poking. Yeah, deja vu again, I guess you could say. From last year, he's a quick shot. Tom had a race back to get to that one. But nothing too crazy or dangerous so far for me to team. That's a great air dribble attempt. The dunk, mm, mm, quite mm. able to get it in, but now. A little bit of danger on the defensive side of here. Safeway Police doing a fantastic effort right now, but no scorers on boards quite yet. Help me out here, Sizz. It was, what, four minutes to Rocket League before you even saw a goal in the first game of the night between us, the first match? It's about 4, 4.30, 440, give or take. Yeah. yeah. And this is shaping up to be pretty similar, it feels like. <laughs> 15 seconds outside of half time or so, Safeway Police. Can't hardly look at this ball without seeing that Safeway Police name. They have been attracted to this one like a magnet thus far, not getting too, too far away from it, except to pick up Boost and more. Who else but Safeway Police across the middle? Fisher doing a great job right there. A huge booming hit over to the left side corner and offense. Second member can't quite get to it. Fisher almost puts this one in for the first of this match and for the first of his team. Safeway Police up, Chrissy doing what they can until they get demoed actually is Davis squad California Davis squad the left in the blue showing the value of those demos so far with a takeaway of this ball Safeway police does what they can to get this one over but uh, they're really gonna have to have the assistance of the teammates to block away that ball 
So you British Columbia now having to play a little bit of more defense. This is a good clear down the midfield. That's a great chance. Fisher just a little off on that read. Grunt off the side while looking for the redirect. A lot of crazy attempts right now for both teams. Starting to get a little more comfortable, it seems. Tom, infield, forces a double commit. Excellent redirect. Grunt, nice shot. Quick towards the net. I thought for a second there. That was going to be in. Doesn't quite get it to go. And we just now hit that 90 second mark. Both teams knocking on the door, but let's get the uh, shot back in their face. That might be enough. No, Salaman's just coming way too fast at this one. Yes, so our, our British Columbia squad. That's, oh my goodness, I'm going to try and say this. University of British Columbia, Okanagan. Okanagan? O-K-A-N-A-G-A-N. A lot of O's, a lot of A's. I, I hope that's the right pronunciation. I'm not going to, in case it's wrong, I'm not going to continue to butcher that one. We will go British Columbia. One minute left, 60 seconds. Like we were saying earlier, this shape went up to be exactly like the previous one. If it continues, then we'll see an incredibly competitive games two, three, four, and hopefully a five. We did not get a game five last time. 45 seconds left here, Sis. Take it away. I feel like a little bit of the difference between this game and last game, though, is really similar. Is that <laughs> there's a lot more opportunities than there was that first game in the last series. They're just not capitalizing on them. The execution is just a little bit off here. 30 seconds to go. Knocking on the door, California Davis getting a lot of pressure. Fisher trying to get something out for his team safely. The sideball, no boost, just gonna have to back up from this one. Chrissy infield, a great pass, but no one there to receive it. Oh, awkward bounce, Fisher towards the net, Tom! He can't get it to go. <laughs> he had the read just slightly off, and look at that, it happens again. Fisher. Wow, fantastic stuff. I, 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 was, uh, I was pretty content to go on to overtime, sis. <laughs> One, hey, one score, one score to rule them all. We'll see if that proves true with the next 12 seconds or so. This University of California Davis squad left blue. <gasps> oh, I thought that was going to be it. The tying shot at six seconds left, but they can still keep this one aloft. So this game not dead yet. They only have to come back by no. one, but that's a fantastic cut across the top as this Canadian squad did everything that they needed to to take it in game number one. Again, again, my favorite Rocket League games here, says my favorite Rocket League games are the 0-1 games, just incredibly close games that come all the way down. They don't go into overtime, but then they come down in like, it was like 30, I think, uh, to be, I'm old, so my, my memory is just shot, right? I think it was 38 seconds left in the first match that we got our first goal in. Now, even that long ago, I can remember. That was 13 seconds in this match we got the first goal. So just two teams just battling each other over and over again for, for the vast majority of these individual Rocket League games and whatnot and, and still coming out to just a one-score difference. That's it. One score on the board. That's it. Total, total, total scores. One. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, it's over. so odd because I feel like California Davis had so many good chances and so many good shots opportunities they just weren't quite able to get it through but i mean hey you can have a million shots on the net and if they aren't that good shots or you can't make contact it doesn't matter at the end of the day because you got to put it in the back of the net and it sounds simple but british columbia they did it so i mean coming into this next game they gotta wonder the adjustments <laughs> deja vu all over again talking about adjustments <laughs> after this first game but i mean it's still it, it was just a neck and neck back and forth game number one it's basic yeah. rocket league yeah, I, I mean, uh, what a more one-sided affair. There's more like one team just needs to keep on doing what they're doing. One team just needs to go forth and try and adjust a lot of things, right? A lot of adjustments, but only for one of those teams. And I am getting confirmation. Okanagan. Okanagan. You know what? I am going to... Yeah, I, I really like that name. I really <laughs> like that name. It's like, like uh, aesthetically pleasing to me. So I'm going to try to refer to our yellow squad, the UBCO squad, the University of British Columbia Okanagan squad, as Okanagan, because I think that's a cool name. I agree. It definitely rolls off the tongue pretty nice here. Fisher, speaking of rolling off, has a great control of that one. Almost because that one throws in that. You see, to the backboard. Not a lot of power. Grunt, a missed touch here, but a nice recovery to get that one out. A double clear from British Columbia is going to have to slow this offense down just slightly. Salamence has a lot of green field to work with. Alexa volley towards the net. Chrissy, another double commit. Not really what you want to see from this team. Grunt, popping it high. Still poking, trying to get some slight opening. They're forcing a lot of awkward touches, but that one's not very awkward. It's just a great clear down to the other side. 
back and forth we go when it comes to offensive opportunity. 65 seconds in this one. A couple honest shots, a couple honest attempts right here, but no like crazy infield passes. That's really what ended up breaking the barrier in our first match right there. And you pointed it out before the game even started. Infield passes, infield passes, and those passes into points. That's going to be the name of the game to putting up more than just one total score across a five-minute Rocket League game. Oh, a great chance here from Tom. Try to get the Doomsy Dish off the sidewall. Not quite able to get it to go. Chrissy pressuring, infield, bench, shot, not able to get there. Third man is there for the follow. Another great save from Grunt. Tom taking control up to the sidewall. I've not really seen them be able to do too much when they get these chances. They just seem to get it up in the air and just launch it towards the other side, which sometimes is a good thing. But uh, it's just a lot of possession giveaway. That was another shot Ooh. on net. It's just so many shots right now being tacked toward the net. Gotta wonder when that defense is gonna break down. Salamance across the middle. Not too much boost to be spoken of. Not that it was required for the movements that he needed to do, but he couldn't just quite get to this ball and try and make it a play as it is. A lot of back and forth between Davis and Okanagan. Back to the middle yet again. This ball is traveled, I think, into both sides, offensive thirds. Wow, that was an honest shot right there. It was the first honest real attempt offensively in call it probably 30 seconds or so. And that is Fisher beating not one but two, one second outside of halftime. They did it last game. Might as well do it this game. Simple, elegant, controlled, beautiful. What more could you ask for? It just great play from Fisher to get that one over the top, forces two out. And uh, British Columbia, right at halftime, have that one goal lead, except this time they got it just a little bit faster. You know, Fisher, looking like a beautiful swan over here, right? It's elegant, like you said. Like you said. It's, what's the difference between a swan and a goose? A swan seems just like more like majestic. Goose is, goose seem angry, you know? Yeah, like they'll attack you if you give them free food type of beat. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but swans, like, are the stuff like fairy tales are made out of, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, nice looking, nice looking animals, right? Even though they let really us know, look chat. Sick. Difference between goose and swan, or geese and swan, swans, swam. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Whoa. We're getting, <laughs> this is getting unhinged. <laughs> A minute fifty seconds left now. U B C O. That is Okanagan has struck first. It's exactly the scoreline that we finished last game at a zero one. But plenty of time left. That was at thirty, or that was at thirteen seconds. Excuse me, last, last time, Chrissy. Trying something right here, but both teams really just fighting, punching, boxing over possession as of right now. Fisher shuts this one down for the time being until Grunt foists one up on over Salamence. Gets up and under from this one, sets it up for Tom, and Tom tees off on this one. Back on over to the yellow, a low, slow roller that does hit the side corner, tries to set something up. Grunt from the top, can't quite get the angle on it. This almost feels like a very grueling series it's just so much just trying to battle for every inch every little bit of possession that they can ask for still tight Salamence has a chance here everyone was a little bit stuck in the half but they do get back under a minute to go now and it's still British Columbia barely holding on to that one goal lead you gotta wonder if California Davis can get some sort of offense going but that's just too weak of a pass it's racing towards the net oh my Ooh. goodness Tom last second ever is able to get that save Forth we go. Fisher realizes it and strikes. That's the second, but really, the way that uh, University of California Davis, squad on the left side, Cal Day, uh, has been going and playing at this one, like they've realized that they were playing from behind and, and they were just dumping everything into offense. These are the kinds of goals that we can really forgive here, Sizz, because it is done in the pursuit of, or not in the pursuit, really in the, in the pressurized situation of simply having a lack of. You know, sand in the hourglass, having a lack of chronological resource, having a lack of time. It's called, kind of almost like that do or die moment. It's that yeah. survival instinct that kicks in. Like you said, oh, well, mm. it's just another freebie uh, just for again. Fisher. Yeah. A free given, but I mean, the, the game pretty much over at this point anyways. Fisher's going to get one more for the stats, and uh, he's responsible for all the goal score this series. Yeah, uh, I was about <laughs> to say, yeah, I think that was Fisher in game one. I know that was Fisher's first goal in game two, and then just the next... Two coming on, coming on here. Four total scores, all of them coming in from Fisher, but uh, but also and again, uh, K 
Cal Davis is playing exactly how they should. If this uh, if this Okanagan goal had come at uh, instead of at 13 seconds, had come at like you know 73 seconds, then this is probably a similar scoreline that we could have seen. Because again, one team is just pouring it all into offense to try and play a little bit of makeup at that point. Three score there for. Your British for Okanagan, for Okanagan, excuse me. They win game one, they win game two, and unfortunately, like, the University of California Davis is playing well, but the simple fact of the matter here, says is that we have now gone ten full minutes without an actual score, an actual ball going into goal with an action now, without an actual point on the board. If we see, we have seen two donuts so far, <laughs> and we've got to turn, turn one of those into a breadstick at least. Zero into a one. Yeah, if people aren't aware, a perfect sweep is when you sweep your opponent and they never score. And uh, this looks like it's kind of aiming up towards that just a little bit. The stats sometimes don't lie. Sometimes they do. Like, if you just watched this last game, you just tuned in, you saw a 3-0, like, oh, man, they must have dominated them. It was a close game. It was just those last-ditch efforts. But still, nonetheless, it's still 2-0. to zero. You're still on match point. And after 10 minutes of Rocket League, you still have yet to put the goal anywhere. <laughs> yeah, hey, no, that's you, you need that. That's fair. I mean, that. these have been honest attempts, but again, just just nothing so far. Uh, to be perfectly fair, Okanagan is like doing really well on defense. What that was, Tom, uh, like a triple up of Tom. Honestly, just triple dosing every single course is better than the previous one when it comes to Tom on defense. Just playing the best like brick wall impersonation. Honestly, like nothing <laughs> really was getting past. Nothing really was getting past. Uh, was getting past Okanagan on on that. Whenever Tom was like in position, of course. Yeah, that great defense is good. It's just being able to fine-tune those saves and the counterattacks. And it, it just seems like it always just falls apart very quickly. And it, it's getting that, those time of session, I'm going to reference the infield passes again because, I mean, it, I just love them. But uh, every single time they get up off that wall, I'd like to see a, a toss on your teammate or maybe off the ceiling. But it's just mm -hmm. let's volley it towards the net so we can get a boost and go play defense again. Not always bad, but you got to start looking for some more outlets. And they just really, ha it's, it's almost like they're just kind of playing free play out there. Like they don't have teammates. Like, uh, like it seems like there's a game plan and there's kind of a, a, a preponderance to stay to that, right? A real preference to like only go with this one thing. And if that gets interrupted, if there's if there's a wrench thrown into the plans there of that machine, then everything just kind of like, you know, falls down and breaks away right there. Again, University of California Davis shouldn't be like upset with their game one, game two, three, zero loss scoreline difference. But again, I really do feel like that comes down to just the amount of time that they're forced to play a hundred percent uh, offense, right? In uh, a 13 second goal, which you're basically staring at is like, okay, guys, like if you can get it, awesome. If not, let's push into overtime in a true neutral type situation with a full lineup as well. Like, why not, right? True 50 50 situation purchased at that point. That is not what we got to. We had a goal at 13 and then just a little bit of time wasting. So, which which makes perfect sense. Not not saying that in a bad way. And I think this is a little bit of a, a break while we're, we're trying to recuperate the lobby and get everything worked. Sometimes the game just likes to farm us, but uh, I think this is great for them. It's just a mental reset. It's not a timeout, but it, this is the closest thing they have to one. Sometimes just taking a, a deep breath, calm down, look at what's going right, look at what's going wrong. Because Rocket League is really, it, it's all about your mental at the end of the day. Your mental, if it's strong, you, you can handle a lot. Comebacks don't come from weak mentals, that's all I'm going to say. It's a very good point. Very, very good point. Comebacks don't come from weak mentals. The big thing that I always say here is that, especially if it's a narrow victory, uh, I feel like the narrowness of a, or a narrow, uh, narrow, a narrow loss, excuse me, I feel like the thing about losses is that if it is very narrow, you can usually pinpoint down like what mistakes are there. You know, if this is like a 5-0 victory, that comes, you know, all the way across, like first goal, you know, once a minute or something like that, the other team is like scoring or whatever, then there's like a lot of things to point to. As it is, Okanagan, Scored what a minute, a minute to uh, thirteen or something like that left, and and, and just kind of goes back to the pure offense type plays. University of California Davis should be able to like pinpoint like, oh well, th this is you know where we did this, we should have done that. Where we done this, we should have instead like kind of like pulled back on that. Maybe not played so aggressively or whatnot. But uh, but hey, maybe that's area crafting yet again. University of California Davis, E A U C D Blue Squad is uh, not at this one quite yet. Still got a full Rocket League game, and we just came off a 3-1 victory, and both of these teams just came off a 3-1 loss, right? So, um, neither team used to getting swept. Hopefully that's uh, this blue squad that can come forth and make that one a little cut. Say, what is it with these teams? They're just 3-1. They're just obsessed with the numbers, I guess. I, I'm not entirely sure, but even if they are, they're going to have to really work towards that first win. 
before they think about anything else right now really want to get some sort of offense going e even if it's having to throw everyone at the field gotta start getting something Salamence takes control of the boost and the ball that's really the best of both worlds situation Chrissy outlet back to the teammate looking for the double tip this is a great setup <laughs> Okay, Fisher, I see you. Put it on the highlight reel. Who else but Fisher? Who else but Fisher? I gotta say, it, it looks like, you know, right there, if that had gone straight in, we're looking at like a 200 kilometer per hour goal or something like that, like a little mini pinch off the top rail. Hands down, the fastest goal, or the quickest goal, I guess I should say, not the fastest, but the quickest time-wise goal in this competition thus far. When you talk about goals, you have to talk about Okanagan, because unfortunately, this is the University of California Davis squad that's not put up any goal in 11 minutes now. 11 minutes and counting on this attempt, but nothing in. I think right now, you just gotta look at shutting down Fisher, because he's the only one that scored anything. Technically, there's five players in this lobby that haven't scored in the 11 minutes that they played of Rock League and so forth. Still, I mean, it's just... When, when a player is hot like that, give them the ball. You don't even need to shoot, and that's what they're doing right now. But look at the demos, the that physical what, play. Exactly. That's what you need. That, that right there is what you need. It, like, it, and that's a beautiful thing about one player really just popping off, right? At the end of the day, you can just do quick math. You know what I'm saying? One minus one equals zero. Just straight up demo this guy. Make him sit in that respawn lobby for you know 30 seconds in a game. Why not? Because again, Fisher is the only one that is really puncturing your defense in every score so far. All five of them. Fisher, 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 Fisher. And Fisher. Hey, he can't shoot the ball if he's not on the field, right? So keep bumping him. Keep going for those. Oh, what a pass down, though. And trying to get his teammates on the board. His great attempt. Just a little bit too much sauce on that shot. Safe play. Infield. No one there. So Grunt's going to take over. Too heavy, though. He's going to give it right back to Fisher. It's not what you want to see. And oh, no chaos. Erupts on the field. Two players went right by the ball. Fisher, 59 kilometers per hour. Proving they don't have to be fast. They just have to be pretty. Exactly, we got a cool shot right here from Fisher. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six goals now from Fisher across three games. Not unfortunately from York. Tom, up. Tom really putting the work in offensively, and that, or excuse me, Tom really putting the work defensively, and now showing up offensively. They got tired of us talking about Fisher. We mentioned Tom before, just not on the offensive side of things. So, Tom. You're getting in our heads a little bit here. Just a nice straight off the kickoff goal. I mean, it's short, sweet, and simple. Let's get another one if you're a fan of this California Davis team. Meanwhile, Br British Columbia side, they're like, yeah, we gave it up. All right, let's give the ball right back to Fisher. who's going for a double off the kickoff, and that time they're able to get it out. Wow. Now a run off the other side. Fisher might have... No, 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 Chrissy, okay, yeah, Chrissy's gonna be able to get that one away. That would have been, like, the best response possible, right? Not not only getting a second goal to, to, to tie it up, but actually forcing Fisher into an own goal. That's gonna be a huge open net, and Chrissy is gonna join the scoring leagues. Uh, you just can't give this goal up, right? You've, you've got two players there, they, they both... Do, they pull the Canadian, they try to be nice and give each other the ball. Say, no, you have it, no, you have it. But you're not Cana you're not the Canadian team. Go for the ball. Fortunately, they didn't. And uh, now they're facing a 3-1 to one deficit just past half time. Um, from the top rope, Salamance almost gets a screaming goal across the middle after Ta Tom puts it down. And defenders really kind of weak response on that one left it rolling across the middle as it is Fisher back to the middle and just an easy one minus one situation yet again back on over Tom takes the pa Tom goes Tom gets past the ball but goes for the goes for the defender right there again miscoordination miscommunication regardless the result is the same nice shot opportunity but again Fisher saw it on the defensive side hasn't had a lot of play had to, had to play a lot of defense but it's a nice save Still, this is great offense from California Davis. Infield, Chrissy, the shot, Tom! Just slightly off. Had to really wish that he could get that one back. But the game moves on still. A lot of time of possession in this half, but they really need to get a goal suit. They say desperation is the stinkiest cologne. Tom has shown what, we, shown what he can do offensively and aerially, but unfortunately, I think the pressures here of a two-score deficit and this clock are really coming in to apply to this University of California Davis school. Another demo. demo. Demos, demos. Like these cars are driving through minefields here, says. Smart stuff. I'm not against it. One trick left in the bag. Might as well pull it out in the last game. Possible, excuse me, last game. 
I like the demos if they could just capitalize on it. But I feel like that's been the name of the series the whole time. It's just been being able to finish your opportunities. Another bang. Nothing too much from this corner. Looking for bumps. Off the corner again. Tom has to dive. It's just never going to go in. It's a good block. Fisher playing so much time. And that clock keeps on a ticket. That one's going to be too high, I believe, unless it takes a nick off the top ceiling. That's going to be an own goal, I believe. Let me watch this one again. Let's me watch this again. My old eyes. I didn't even see it in me. Oh, no, he just read it. Salamence. Oh, no, yeah, okay, gotcha. My goodness. Yeah, player where where was this all right series? There. Yeah, right. Salamence. This Salamander will bite. 23 seconds left. Oh, I, I had it earlier. Oh, Okanagan. Excuse me. Okanagan is uh, still ahead by one. Though. Oh, look at the pass, the shot, just wide. Tom for the finish, Tom can't get it to go. And it's banging down the other side. Fisher looking for the nail the coffin. Can't quite get that one up, Chrissy. Keep it high. Time running out, Safeway with a pre-jump. Oh, it's a fake for Fisher. The 200 IQ play with two seconds left. They send the house for whatever reason and it pays off. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, Tom, Tom took a big bite out of that one. Uh, yeah, this is impossible because the, unless they get like some kind of crazy fast pinch play in a single second, this one is over. From the ceiling to the wall, to the to the bottom, excuse me, from the ceiling to the floor is right there, and just a quick one. You know, eight seconds left. Like maybe, you know, might have might have been something they could have come back on. Regardless, a one score difference in game one for Okanagan. A three-score difference in game two that really could have been a one-score difference. And then a much more of a different recipe there for game number three. We see University of California Davis actually get onto the board and this one be a lot more, like, offensively at least, like, even-handed. Yeah, I feel like that was just kind of like a, a pure offensive team versus a team that wasn't really sure where to find their footing. And by the time they did find their footing, just a little bit too late. A uh, great performance. I mean, that was... Fisher, by far, the MVP, uh, had a lot of highlight plays, highlight reels, highlight shots for his team. And uh, I, I think that was the difference. I think Fisher just, he just elevated above everyone else in it. Uh, I think that's really what it comes down to. It's entirely fair. If we're giving out MVP, offensive player, defensive player, defensive player, definitely Tom. Definitely Tom. Offensive player and MVP, definitely going to be Fisher on the other side with, with just everything offensively. But Tom, Tom, Tom. Tiger Shark Tom, something like that. I don't know. Seriously, <laughs> some fa some fantastic stuff. Now, his prominence in that defense really came in that first game as well. And Tom is a three-letter word for why that game went to 0-1. It wasn't just like a much higher of a blowout there for Okanagan. Tom did everything defensively they needed to really in game number one. And then uh, and then as, that, as it evolved on as well, right, Tom was able to get some offense going as well and take a goal in game number three. A game that, again, you know, California Davis is just playing from behind the entire time. So, What a performance. And I think, Tugboat, that does wrap it up here it for us. It, some great games today overall. Absolutely. I mean, we're just getting started, right? We're just getting started. Just getting started. Just getting started. It has been an absolute pleasure. This is for our first time grabbing a mic together. Big shout out to all the folks behind the scenes once again over there for the NECC. I said production, TOs. Uh, coach, anything else? If you're not if you're not Sizz, you're not FBI tugboat, and you've helped kind of put this one together, then we appreciate you guys. You're making our jobs as casters just so much easier. And uh, that's going to be about it. Unfortunately, we've reached my least favorite part of any broadcast. That, of course, is the end. Until next time, guys. Same time, same channel, same eSport next week for NECC. There will be a lot of eSport action uh, starting on Monday and going on into Friday. See you guys later.